bow our heads now. Oh, our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee this morning for Thy goodness and mercy, for giving us the privilege of assembling here together again, a day this side of the great eternity to worship the lovely one, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank You because that He come to the earth to to redeem us from a, a life of sin yes. and to give us this great heritage that we have through His righteousness. And as we this morning are here as His ambassadors to, to break this bread of life to this waiting congregation, may the Holy Spirit inspire every word and place it into the hearts of the people just as we have need. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be seated. <coughs> I certainly deem this a great privilege again this morning to be standing here with you. Sorry that we don't have no more room than what we do to take care of the people. Our tabernacle isn't quite large enough. And we are very grateful to be here through this holidays from, from down at our home in, in Tucson. And the weather was kind of rough, but we was happy to be here and to have the meeting. Now, I want to announce that tonight there will be a healing service tonight, or a prayer for the sick. And uh, I told Billy just now, he said, well, what will you do? I said, well, maybe you better give out some cards tonight about 630. Uh, so that where the people won't uh, see it's so jammed in here, we can know just how to bring them one by one, so you can be called by the number of your card, and uh, so there won't be any congestion. We can just call them one by one and let them go through the line as we pray for them. So you, if you're sick or have loved ones who are sick and want to bring them in, come about uh, 6.30, something like that, 7 o'clock, and get a prayer card. You'll be at the door or however he gives them out as you come in. And then... Um, this will probably be about the last time we get to be back for some time because we've got a very heavy schedule now. Down, still in the United States until this spring late. So we, uh, we'll um, maybe get back again a little later on this summer. If the Lord willing, I'd like to if we get the, the place over here. If it's air conditioned, I was going to ask Billy. I'd like to speak on those seven trumpets. Have a certain a meeting here for the seven trumpets if, um, if the Lord willing. Or that uh, the seven church ages and seven seals and now the seven trumpets. And could get some time like in June where people's has their vacation, give them time so they could uh, get in. And um, I'm glad to see Brother Shepherd here this Amen. morning uh, from the hospital. I was out seeing him the other day. And Sister Shepherd, I did get to call you yesterday. That dream that you sent me was very, very fine. You've seen as it was Christ in a, on a, in a in the skies upon this white horse, but yet being bound, you see. But yet before it faded away, all your family got to see it. That uh, dream interpretation is that your family has seen his move of this last days before. Amen. 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 So it's, uh, it was very spiritual and a very good blessing to you, you family. That family come up out of some great tribulation to come to where they are today. Now, we have something a little on the sad side this morning. Since I met here, one of our precious friends and, and comers to this tabernacle, the Coates family, which uh, we all love them. They come down from the east and are from Chicago around. And uh, Sister Big, Billy Havoc and, and her Sister Armstrong and all the girls, they, I think they were formerly Nazarene. And it's come to the Lord, and they're very precious friends of ours. And brother and sister Coates, their father and mother, was on the road home the other day from over in the west, and uh, someone slid on the road and and killed sister Coates instantly. And 
And while they called me over in, in Tucson and I heard about it, I was sitting right there then with a box of candy that she had just made for me, sitting on the, uh, on the table. And you don't know how it made me feel, but I, I think that, thank the Lord this morning, she didn't have to suffer. She was getting aged and she didn't have to suffer. And she went home to be with God. I was just thinking and talking to her two girls just now, a room in there. Brother Coates is here this morning. He got some broken ribs. I called him in the hospital and or he was hospitalized over in Missouri and his ribs broke and things, but he certainly had a real courage, a real Christian, knowing that his little queen is not dead. She's alive forevermore. And uh, there will be a uniting time. Job said one time, Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave and keep me in this secret place until thy wrath be passed. Do you ever notice God in nature does the same thing like the sap that's in the trees up here holding on the leaves and before winter time comes the wrath is poured out upon the earth. See, at one time the earth didn't have winter. And in the millennium there will never be any more winters. You see? So it's the wrath upon the earth. And then when that happened, see, before the wrath comes, God in His mercy sends that sap right down into the underneath the ground into the roots of that tree and keeps it there until the wrath of the winter be passed then raises it back up again in, in the springtime. Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave and keep me in the secret place until thy wrath be passed. That's what he's done for our sister. That's what he does for all Christians. Brother Coates, God bless you. I'm so happy to know that, that the seal of God holds in the hour of trouble. I know what he's going through with because I went through with something similar years ago. But I'm, one by one we have to cross over this great river and, I, and it'll be my time one of these days and your time one of these days. But as David said, I'll fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Now, in commemoration of Sister Coates, our precious sister who's gone on to God, I, there's a little commemoration to her this morning. I want the congregation to stand just for a moment. <laughs> Let us bow our heads and think of one who once a few days ago walked in, in this tabernacle, in and out among us, shook her hands, a lovely Christian is now in that place that the Lord let me see uh, not long ago. A young woman again waiting for her oncoming family. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the memories of Sister Coates. What a precious, dear sister. And now time comes that when we live out our span in life it has been allotted to us, we must cross the river. We thank Thee because that she did not have to suffer. There must not have been anything against her here that she had to suffer for. She just went straight into the arms of God just in a moment. Her husband, her children are here this morning, Lord, right back to their post of duty. How we thank Thee for that gallant faith, the faith of our fathers living still instead of dungeon, flame, and sword. We thank Thee for all these things. Rest her precious soul, Lord. She was our sister. Grief, teardrops fall in our heart for her absence. But joy springs up from the teardrops. Yes. Let us know with the assurance of Thy Word that she lives on yes. in an immortal life that can never die. There will never be an accident where she's at now. Only waiting for those who come afterwards to join with her. Bless Brother Coates and bless them girls and her family, Lord, and those loved ones and all who love her. And someday, Father, we trust to meet her up there in that great beyond where there's no sickness, sorrow, or death. Until that time, keep us all healthy and well serving you and looking forward for that day. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. May the great Holy Spirit that deals with the share at the tabernacle in revealing His Word, may He rest her gallant soul in peace till we meet her.
Now, it is warm in here this morning because it's uh, bodies, you know, so much being uh, the heat of the human body. Now, we would um, like to make an announcement now. Sometimes our service this year being long of a, of a morning, the reason it is, it's really not right to hold a service that long because hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours. But what I'm doing, I'm taping back here, see? And this tape goes all over the world. And that's why we gather in so long of a morning uh, is, is because that I come here to make these tapes. That's, uh, to, uh, they're, see, you can see in the room there that the tapes is being, being made. Now, they go out everywhere across the world. Now soon, the Lord willing, this coming, as soon as I leave here, I'll be leaving, the Lord willing, tomorrow morning sometime, uh, back to Arizona because we've got a meeting coming up. And then it's just all the way across the south. And you southern people from down in Georgia and Mississippi and Texas and Alabama, we're coming right down in there, all the way into Florida, right away. We're going from here to Phoenix and to California and right back to Dallas and and uh, perhaps drop down into San Antonio, I think it is, and back over in Alabama and Florida and through there. So we'll be seeing you people down in there, the Lord willing, right away. And then uh, you keep praying for us, and we'll let you know when if we, the Lord puts upon our heart now to hold uh, uh, a few days here uh, this coming summer. I had a group of meetings scheduled, and many of you in New York know when the vision comes to say that those meetings in the Scandinavian country, you remember them schedule in there? And then while I was in New York, the vision came that every one of those meetings would cancel for some reason. And I remember I told some of you here when I was in New York, that's just exactly what happened because they all went the same day and couldn't get that building. So then that might leave a little spot there in June. It might be in the will of the Lord. I was thinking maybe to come back for those trumpets right here before it's too late. See? So we know that everything works just right. So that was on my heart. So it might be what he wants us to do. Now, I uh, see you're changing seats with each other and out in the halls and so forth. We wish we just had a place to sit down. And now when we have those trumpets, that's, we want to get the high school gymnasium. Yeah, I think it seats 5,500. And then we'd have a chance to everybody to have a seat and sit down and listen quietly while we're while we're preaching. The trumpets are very, very fine. I looking at it the other day, see it on the sixth seal, all seven trumpets sound right there on that sixth seal. Thing. Just before the seventh seal opens the coming of Christ. And tonight, I have a very important message that I want to speak just before the, the, the healing service. And if you're here and are going to stay over, well, we'll try, if it's possible, to start just a little bit early because there'll be a prayer line. I won't preach too long, but there's something that I wanted to say to the church for some time and kind of post you on the, 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 how things are running at this time and just where we're standing. And um, to the best of my knowledge through the Scripture. Now, I want you to turn this morning with me if you want to mark down or keep record of where we are reading from uh, the book of Isaiah and I wish to read from Isaiah the 42nd chapter of Isaiah we are very happy this morning also to have brother Dow sitting with us here while you're turning you know, they thought he wasn't going to live here in Shreveport the other day, and he certainly got faith. <laughs> the rest of you, times right out of it, the Lord blesses him out of all. See, Brother Dow is 91 years old and had a complete heart failure and heart attack on top of it. And the very doctor said that he didn't see there's any way for him to live. Brother Dow is living in the doctor's den. <laughs> he just, hey, Brother Dow said, and then uh, a man 91 years old with heart failure and heart attack. And there when I was going up there, I saw him come walking down the street. I saw him in the church and I went and told him under an oxygen tent, in the name of the Lord, I shake your hand and I'll see you in church again and shake your hand on the street. The very next service, here he was sitting right back here in the church 
And I went over to Louisville where we eat at the Blue Boar over there to eat. And just as I got out of my car, started up the street, here come Brother Dow walking down the street. There it was just perfectly. And how the Lord has blessed him. Now we're going to talk on healing tonight and things. And have got some real outstanding things to tell you for tonight. But now, so that I can get the tapes now and then get ready to turn them on. I want to start reading from Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, and the 1st to the 7th first, and Matthew, the 4th chapter, beginning, I believe, 15 and the 16th verse. Now, in, in the 42nd chapter of, of Isaiah, we're going to read. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry or lift up or cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has have set judgment in the earth and the island shall wait for his laws. Thus saith the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and the spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and I will Hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blinded eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sat in darkness out of the prison house. Now in the Matthew's Gospel the fourth chapter, I wish to read the fulfillment of that prophecy given by Isaiah. In the fourth chapter of Matthew, uh, I will begin to read, if possible, the, let's begin at the 12th verse instead of the 15th. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Nephilim, that it might be fulfilled which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold, the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee, of the Gentiles, the people sat in darkness, saw great light, and to them that sat in the regions of the shadows of death, light is sprung up. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. May the Lord add His blessings to the reading of His Word. And now, odd little text that I heard someone speaking said this, but I want to take this for a text. There is a man here that can turn on the light. And now, we're going to speak on the subject of light. This follows the three subjects that we have just been speaking on. One of them at Tucson, or at Phoenix, on why Jesus came by the way of Bethlehem. That He must be because He is Bethlehem. Bethlehem, B-E-T-H, is house. E-L, God, E-H-A-M, is bread. Bread, house, of God's bread. And each Christian that's born in Christ is born in Bethlehem. Amen. God's house of bread. And then in there, a typing of David, which was a fugitive at the time of his uh, excommunicating from his people. He was turned out. And Bethlehem was besieged. And the Philistines was garrisoned around Bethlehem. And David, a fugitive, a type of the church today, of Christ. See, Christ is a fugitive to his own church today. They have, a fugitive is something that's refused. 
And David had been refused, yet he was anointed to be king. But the prophet had anointed him. And during this time, being a, a fugitive from his people, he had picked up many gallant Gentiles. One of them killed 800 men one day with a spear or sword. And another one jumped into a pit and killed a lion on a snowy day. And, and this gathering lentil, which is beans or peas or something, and, and uh, all of them run away. And he stood and killed man till his arm got tired. They also killed those giant brothers of Goliath. Gallant man holding to David because they knowed he was coming in power. They knowed, no matter what anyone said, God had the anointing on David and they knowed it. Amen. They were Gentiles. Amen. No matter how much they turned him out, they yet know that he was coming to power. And one day there, what a type it is today of, of Christ, a fugitive. You say Christ a fugitive according to the Bible that we God has gallantly taken us through those seven church ages. This lady of seeing church, Christ was a fugitive outside of his church, rejected trying to get back in again. He's a fugitive to his own church. And the reason he is a fugitive is because he is the Word. Amen. And they won't let the Word in. They've accepted creeds instead. And we find out then that in this great struggle, those gallant men around, around David, Gentiles. If you notice how Bethlehem was formed, don't want to get on that subject. But how Bethlehem, actually Rahab, the harlot, her son was the one who founded Bethlehem. It's a wheat center and a lot of fine water there and he founded the little city and it was the smallest of all the cities because the prophet said out Bethlehem of Judea aren't thou the least amongst all the princes or the cities of Jerusalem or Judea but out of thee shall come the governor that will be my people out of the little one David when he was selected up there the great fine brothers when the prophet Samuel went up to anoint all of them standing there, great, gallant man, look like a big, look like fine looking kings, but the very rejected one was the one David that had the oil poured out upon him. The rejected city was the one that Christ, it's the rejected that Christ picks up. See? The ones that's rejected. Then we find after he come over to, and after he come Boaz, and there come another Gentile in, which he come in by Ruth, and now there come Jess, now Jess come David, and a little. Hillside stable out there brought forth the King of Kings, yes. Jesus Christ, the Son of David, his spiritual son. Now, then he was, David himself being born in the city, he had to come to this little spot. And it was called Bethlehem, which means the, the house of God's bread, and he is the house of God's bread. Yes. David laying there on the hill that day, and he looked down and seen the Philistines garrisoned around like that. Must have got hot and thirsty. He said, oh, if I could just have a drink from that well once more. While well, the least of his thoughts was a command to his them who loved him. Yeah. So is it today. The least of Jesus' thoughts or how about his word yeah. should be a command to we Gentiles who love him. Amen. For we know he's coming into power. Amen. No matter how much he's rejected, heavens and earth will pass away, but this will still reign just the same. For all heavens and earth is gone. Yeah. And we know he's coming into power cause. Nothing will keep it from happening. This is Christ. The revelation of him. And this is going to happen just the way the word says it is because he is the word. And the least of his commands are, no matter how little it is, if it's to be rebaptized or whatever it is, we'll do it anyhow. Amen. It's his command. Amen. And the least of David's thought was a command to those Gentiles. Or are they a type of the Gentile church today? Gallant man. <clears throat> See? Those men who stood by David were Gentiles, but gallant man. They were fearless. They didn't know what fear was. Oh, One man took a sword and killed 800 men. I'm all around him. What a man that was. What a man. One of the men is an Egyptian warrior run up with a long spear. He only had a stick in his hand. He took the stick and knocked the spear out of his hand, took the spear and killed him himself. Okay. One of those giants had 14-inch fingers like that. Uh, 14 inches, your finger just as long as your hand closed. Open that up, that would be a 28-inch hand and with a spear. And jumped right in there and killed him. See? Why? He was a gallant man, a Gentile, looking upon an anointed one that he knew was coming into power. Yeah. Did you notice them being so gallant to David when David finally come in power, he made them ruler over cities? Amen. Didn't Jesus promise the same thing? Same thing. Make them ruler. 
Then in there, when David's desire was to have a fresh drink, he probably had some old warm stagnated water up there he's drinking. But he happened to think of that fresh water down there at Bethlehem, the house of God's bread. And he said, if I only had a drink from that well, and those men pulled their sword and fought 15 miles of Philistines. <laughs> Not because he asked them to, but because they know he wanted it. Amen. And they cut them Philistines all the way to the well, while two of them fought the other and got a, his bucket of water and fought their way back, all the way back, and handed it to David. Amen. Talk about gallant. David, a godly man, said, God forbid that I would drink it from these friends that put their life in jeopardy. And he made a drink offer, poured it out upon the ground Amen. to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. He's the one worthy of that, not me. Amen. But very type of Christ himself with his own eternal life within him. But smitten rock poured his life upon the ground as a sin offering for us Amen. that this word could live. Amen. Oh, Gentiles, as I have said... Who will pull that sword with me? He wants a fresh drink this morning. Not this old stagnated church creeds and things we're fooling around with. He wants genuine faith in His Word. Let's go to the well and bring back a drink. A refreshment. A worship. That's built up on not creeds and denomination, but a genuine spirit worship with Christ among us, living His life the way He wants to among us. That's not with creeds and s different things. Let's just, just have him that way. Now, the next was how God dealt with the people through a dream in the days of uh, Joseph. Do you notice a dream is secondarily? It's a secondarily way of God working. Some people who have dreams don't mean nothing. You can eat too much and have nightmares. And dream is a secondarily way. See? Well, why would God protect His own son through a secondarily way? He appeared to Joseph, the welfare of his own child. He sent in a secondarily way. Did you ever think of it? Because there was no prophet in the land. He had to work through dreams, and it wasn't a dream that had to be interpreted. The angel of the Lord said, Joseph, fear not to take in thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's an unusual thing for that to happen. Joseph, being a just man... He, he was unusual. God is unusual. And the unusual is hard to understand. That's why it's so hard to understand truth today. It's so unusual. Yeah. A woman to have a baby without knowing a man, that was very unusual. But if you're honest and sincere, God can appear to you yet in a dream. Yeah. It goes to show that anything that you have, whether it's your mind, where you can whistle, sing, testify, or whatever you can do, if your whole being is committed to God, God can use it if you just let Him do it. Then the following night, up here, Brother Neville preached on the subject of escaping, how the, the man escaped. And I thought it was kind of remarkable in this morning, the Holy Spirit seems to have me to deal upon the subject of the light. The very next, go right on in the beginning, how Christ's life started at the manger. We're walking right back through it again in our text. And he didn't know it, I didn't know it, and here it is right the same thing. See, right on, the next thing is where he enters his ministry. And tonight, we got something to blend right with that, to go right on tonight, the Lord willing. Now, great light, the Gentiles who sat in the regions of the shadows of death, great light sprang up among them. And Zebulun and Nephilim, in the, well, the way of Galilee of the Gentiles, great light, they saw a great light. Now, light, the first time light we find it in the Bible is found in Genesis 1 3 it was God's spoken word made the light God said let there be light Genesis 1 3 and there was light now remember then light comes by the spoken word of God and light is the vindication or the subject that he has spoke is light. When the light flies, shows that God said, let there be light, there was no light. And he said, let there be light, and there was light. Yeah. That's a proof the light is a vindication of his spoken word. Yeah. Same thing today. Amen. A vindication of his spoken word. Now, when you see his word being vindicated, or other words, made known, proved, 
That is a, the light of His spoken word. And without light, nothing can live. Without light. There is no life upon the earth today that, but what has to come by the, the light of the sun and a botany life and so forth. And there's no eternal life outside of the Son of God. Amen. He is the light. Now, we find out, I believe, as we study now, and uh, this light, uh, the earth was without form. Now, some people argue today in our schools and so forth about the world being so many million years old and trying to condemn uh, the Bible and say it's wrong. They just don't never read the Bible. That's all because the Bible don't tell us how old the world is. The Bible said, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth, period. When and how, that's, we don't know it. Now, that's the first, that's a period, that's the end of that sentence. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. It might have been a hundred million or a billion or whatever it was and how he done it. That's up to him to know, see, not to me. But the world, or the earth was out form and void and the water was up on the, the earth and God said, moved up on the water and said, let there be light. Amen. Now, I believe that the sun and so forth is already in existence. I believe the moon, as it goes on Genesis 3 to explain it. But I believe what was here, that the world was going to use it, and therefore, as it moved in, there was fog, mist, all over the earth, making it dark. And God said, let there be light, and the darkness faded away. And there was a cloudless sky. I believe that's God's way of doing things. He, in the Bible, the next verse says, the fourth verse says, and He separated the light from the darkness. Yeah. And the light He called day, and the darkness He called night. And God's Word always separates light from darkness. Amen. It's the Word that does the separating. Light from darkness. God ever does the same thing. When He gets ready to use anything, like He got ready to use this old star or whatever it was, this world, He had to separate the light from the darkness. When He gets ready to, lead, to use a, a group of people, He has to separate the light from the darkness. When He gets ready to use an individual, He separates the light from the darkness. Amen. Light comes by God and the, remember, the light come by His spoken Word. The Word of God said, let there be light when there was no light. And He sent the light to separate the darkness from the light. This Word of command cleared the sky so the sun could shine in. And His Word today is what clears back all of the atmospheres of unbelief. I was talking, I had I think 11 interviews just before I got to pulpit this morning in there. So bad. The other day, a little friend of mine, Jim Poole, his little boy, I thought he had a heart attack, rushed him to the hospital. He was an asthmatic condition. I told the little fellow he couldn't, his little heart jumping and breathing and he's screaming and couldn't get his breath and the little fellow looked like he was dying. When they got him here and I was fixing to go to the hospital and they brought him here and took hold of his little hand I said, what's done it? Measles has struck the kid. And the measles, the fever has struck the little fella. You watch him in a couple of days I want to see him again. He'll be full of measles and here he is full of measles, you see. Now, what? God separates darkness from light or light from darkness and he separates death from life. And He does it by His Word. His Word is what always brings this forth. Now, light, well, now the seed was already upon the earth. I believe God had planted the seed. And just as long as the sun could get to that seed, it began to grow. And that's the reason it only taken days to bring forth these things because the seed was already in the earth. But all it needed was light. And that's the way God has today His seed is already here, His Word. Yeah. The only thing it needs is light on it. Amen. And He is that light. Amen. Or He Amen. is the Word. The Word and the light is the same thing. The life in there is the light of the Word. Amen. It's the life. The germ of life lays within the grain. And the grain, uh, the life is what breaks forth and brings forth the life out of the grain. 
That's the way that Christ in the Word makes the Word do what it's supposed to do. Just like the life in the grain of wheat or whatever it is. It makes the wheat do what it's supposed to do. Because it is the life that's in it. All life. So life is only by the Word of God. Made manifest. Life comes only by the Word of God made manifest. As long as it is just in the book like this, it still it can be questioned. But when it's made manifest, then you see the product of what it spoke of being manifested, then that is light on the, on the Word. See, that's what brings the Word said so. And then when it comes to pass, that is life in light. Light bringing life. Light brings life. Plank the wheat out here, it'll, it'll put it in the basement, cover it all over, and it'll, it'll never bring forth anything because it can't. There's no light there. But as soon as light strikes it, then it'll bring forth life if it's a germatized seed. That's the same thing it is in the Word. See, the Word is God, and when the life strikes it, it brings it, the light strikes it, it brings the Word to life again. Yeah. Every age has always been that. Oh, how we appreciate these great things. How that the Word being vindicated is the light of the spoken Word. Yeah. See? God said, let there be light. Now, what if He just said it and no light come? Then we don't know where it's true or not. We don't know where He's all right. We don't know where He's God or not. Because he just said, let there be, and there wasn't. See? So then, when God speaks and we see it is, then that's the light that shines forth the truth of the Word. See? There is light and life. All natural life comes by His spoken Word. And the Son is His spoken Word. He said He created a great light in the heavens for the day and a lesser light for the night. See? And all natural life has to come by God's spoken word. Amen. A flower cannot grow without the light of God's spoken word shine upon it. Amen. For the Son is, the S-U-N, is the spoken word of God when He said, Let there be light. Amen. See? It's God's spoken life, and no matter how much people try to, to say this, that, or the other, it still remains the same. You have to have that Son. Amen. So life natural can only come by the spoken Word of God. Yeah. And spiritual life, eternal life, Amen. can only come by God's spoken Word of life. Amen. Life was a S-O-N this time. Amen. In Him is light. <laughs> and in Him is no darkness. And He is God's spoken light. Is that right? Amen. God's spoken Word. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God, and it's forever God. Amen. See? And it takes the light of God to strike the Word to make it live. Amen. Here's what He spoke, now let the light shine. Amen. Oh, yeah. Let the light shine, and the light will bring every Word to its right position in its season. Amen. 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 Oh, you see, when it comes time, Sometimes that little grain lays in the earth dormant all through the uh, winter, uh, like seed, uh, winter wheat, sowed in the ground. But when that sun gets just right, oh, it's got to live. Amen. See? And it can't live without the sun. And God's made promises for every age and every day. And when the light gets right and shines upon that, it'll produce just exactly what the Word said, because Amen. He is the light and the light. God's Word comes only by the Bible. God's Bible is the, the printed form of the Son of God because the Bible said that it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's God revealing Himself through Christ and Christ is the Word. And it takes the light of God to shine upon that Word to vindicate it, to prove that God still speaks life, eternal life. Amen. He speaks uh, natural life, brings the life. Life only comes by the light. The Word made manifest or made flesh. When all the promises become uh, in the Bible, become manifest is when Jesus Christ, the Word, was made flesh among us. God always works through man. 
Man is God's subject. Now, if it gets a little warm in here for you, you pull the windows down or whatever you wish to, cut the furnace down, maybe the janitor cut the furnace down a little. See, many are warm, and it's warm standing here too. <laughs> so uh, remember that um, I'm glad it's warm instead of cold, because I, I like warm. I, warm always brings light, life. <laughs> Takes fire. <laughs> Notice, now made flesh, when the Word becomes flesh, it becomes manifested. Like, take the Word and put it in the right position, the right kind of ground, it'll bring forth, the, the seed will bring forth its kind. And the Word brought into the right kind of a heart, it'll manifest itself. It'll bring forth the light. It'll bring forth upon it. All right. Nothing natural, uh, nothing uh, natural or spiritual can live without God's light. Life can only come then by light. Nothing natural or nothing spiritual can live without God's light. Think of that. All right. But when He sends us the light, and does all these things and then we reject it. Now that's the pitiful part. It's when light is rejected. When it's sent to us. Now could you imagine some man today saying, I just refuse to say there's such a thing as a son. I don't believe there is a son. And he runs down into the basement and, and shuts all the doors and sets back in the darkness. It said, there is no such a thing as sun. There is no such a thing as light. You know right away there was something mentally wrong with that person. Amen. See? There's something wrong when he runs back into a dark basement and refuses to accept the benefit of God-given light. There's something wrong with him. He don't want his warm rays. He doesn't want his health-giving uh, substance. He doesn't want his light to walk in. He had rather set in darkness. It shows mentally something wrong, natural with the man. And I say this with all love and respect. So is there something spiritually wrong with a man that will run back into his denominations of creed and refuse to see Bible light when it's shining right before him? There's something wrong with him. Hallelujah. Goes back into his creeds and farms and shuts the door and says, There is no such a thing as uh -huh. that. The days of miracles is past. There's no such a thing as divine healing. There are none of these things. That was for an apostle. The man is spiritually crazy. Yeah. Yeah. There's something wrong with him. He, he, he's pulled down the curtains and rejected the Holy Spirit that can come upon him if he can, if ye abide me and my words in you, then. The light shining upon this word, ask what you will. Oh, yeah. See? See? There's something wrong that he would reject the God-given sources that God has given to us to live by his word. The just shall live by faith. And man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Not part of the word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when a man will just refuse that, there's something wrong with that person. That's right. Something wrong with his experience that he claims to love God and then refuses God. There's something gone wrong with the person. We know that without a shadow of doubt. He rejects it. Runs into his place and says, oh, I, just, I don't want to know nothing about it. Don't tell me nothing about these things. I, I don't believe nothing about it. You don't matter what you say. The fellow said not long ago I was telling you about he said, I don't care if you would bring 50 cancers and bring 50 doctors to testify them. I don't believe, I don't care if you'd raise up the dead right before me, I wouldn't believe it. See? There's something wrong with that person. Amen. There, there, there's, uh, and yet the man was a minister. See? See? He's supposed to be a minister. But just because that organization doesn't believe in, in the uh, uh, powers of God... Don't believe that the word meant just what it said. The man runs into this basement, old, musty, dirty, filthy basement of an organization and refuses the warmth and life-giving rays of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus.
Jesus Christ, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Man, there's something wrong with that person. You'd rather live in that must, darkness, and so forth, than to live in the light of the God and of the Bible that said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The works that I do shall you do also. Even greater than this shall you do. For I go to my Father. There's something wrong with that person. Without a question at all. There's something wrong. And to you man, let's listen to this across the world, wherever you may be. There's something wrong with your experience when you say that you love God and refuse His Word. There's something you refuse the very... No wonder the things can, the church is in its condition and things cannot be done as God promised is because you won't even receive the word or walk in the light. Amen. The Bible said, let us walk in the light as he is in the light. Amen. Then the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Sin is unbelief. Then if we are walking in the God-given light of the hour, then God takes that word that's given for the hour and vindicates it just like he did in Genesis 1-3. He said, let there be light and light Amen. come forth. Amen. His word went forth and light followed it Amen. and cleared away the mist Amen. and the darkness went to one corner and the light shined on the other side. Amen. That's the way God does today. He sends his word for this hour. Amen. And the Holy Spirit comes and makes that word live. Amen. And the darkness goes on to the creeds and denominations, but light shines because it's a word of God being vindicated. That his word is true. Hallelujah. Now, there's nothing fictitious about that. That's just exactly scriptural. Yes. All right. Now, we find that uh, the wise man, the wise man of the old, followed the God-given substance. They followed the Word of God to the light. Amen. Because it was the Word that brought life. Amen. Now, you say, how did they follow well, they were kind of magis, we understand. And then we find out that Balaam, the prophet, back in Numbers 24, 17, uh, Balaam was kind of a magi himself. He was a prophet, truly. And he prophesied here and said a star would rise out of Jacob. And when these wise men saw that the Word of God said a star would rise out of Jacob, they followed that little God-given token to the source of eternal life. Amen. So the wise man today, who is not blinded by creeds, Amen. will follow the God-given spoken Word till they see the fullness of the power of God moving forth Amen. in this hour. Amen. They, they see it and they know that it's here in the Scripture. God promised it for this day. No matter how many observatories, how many other things told the wise man, well, you're out of your mind. Two years, there was some travel. They passed by many nations. And they said, where are you going? Oh, we have seen his star in the east and we come to worship him. Amen. Amen. And when they lined up in Jerusalem, the denominational headquarters, they didn't have the answer. They went up and down the streets crying, where is he? Born king of the Jews, they know nothing about it. So they called on the word to find out. They had fallen, known that star was leading them to the eternal light. Guide us to thy perfect light. Amen. And the word is what guides you to the light, and the light's what makes the word vindicated. Amen. Amen. Notice, they were wise men. And wise men today, not wise. The wisdom in this world is foolishness to God. Amen. All your scientists and you people who are depending on some great scholarship or something or other telling you how to split an atom, it can't give you life. No. There's nothing can give you life but the spoken word of God. Amen. It's the only word that life can come is through His spoken word. Amen. And that's all right to know how to split an atom. I wish they never found it out. But if they, they have to do it because this world is hanging today. It had to happen to burst these big holes in the earth to let that lava come forth and 
rejuvenate this world again. Amen. To make a new earth. Amen. Where the righteous will walk out upon the dust of the wicked. Oh, Amen. Amen. Where sin will be forgotten. Everything has a way of renewing itself. And man who is given to live on this earth by his own wisdom, taking a tree of knowledge instead of the tree of life, yeah. he'll destroy the earth that God gave him to live on. Yeah. But those who are still on the tree of life shall come to a new heavens and a Amen. new earth yeah. where there is no sickness or death. Light. Light, Lord, send us light. It was the angels of God that showed light upon the hill to guide the shepherds to the eternal life. See, it only comes by light. Light can only come by light. The shepherds wanting to know. You know, when a king is born, they have singing. Great carrying on when the king is born. Now, he was so secretly born and born in a stable, uh, in a manger where the cattle and horses was eating. But yet, he was a king. And the the angels came down and sang the hymns to the shepherds in the light. Amen. The angels themselves were lights that showed with the Word of God. They had the Word of God and told them, Today in the city of David, in Bethlehem, is born Christ the Savior. Amen. The angels had the Word, and the Word came by light to God. And they followed the Word of the angels to the eternal light. They found the baby there wrapped in swaddling cloths, as they had said. For you see, life only comes by light. Notice, He was the Word, made light, or became light. The Word, in that generation... He was the word light of that generation because the prophets of old had spoke of him. And here he come and vindicated he was the light of God's spoken word. Yeah. See? All the prophets had, uh, had said had been fulfilled in him. See? The prophets back here with the word like God was at the beginning when he said, let there be light. And light came. Now the prophets said, a virgin shall conceive. Bring forth the son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, for it will be God with us. Now they had spoken, the word had went out, but he was the light. Amen. What was he? The fulfillment. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. He was the fulfillment of that word. Amen. He was the manifestation of that word. Amen. So is it today. Amen. God's word has been fulfilled at the hour. That's the light. It's God. Manifesting himself. Amen. He was a light of the world. And when the prophets inspired by the Holy Spirit said, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a, a son is given, or a child is given. And his name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. There it was. What was he? The light that fulfilled that word. Amen. Amen. The light that fulfilled that word. And Matthew and uh, Saint Matthew the twenty eighth chapter we find, and uh, when Jesus raised from the dead, he also was the light of the spoken word of David, which said, "I'll not leave his soul in hell, Amen. neither will I suffer my holy one to see corruption." Amen. Death was in darkness, but he broke open the seals of death Amen. and walked into it and come back out again. He was the light that vindicated oh, yeah. Amen. that the dead can live. After they are dead. Hallelujah. He was. Oh. On the day of Pentecost. That was the light. That showed when the Holy Ghost had come. Isaiah said in the 28th chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah said. That with precept must be upon precept. Line must be upon line. Here a little and there a little. Hold fast to that what's good. For with stammering lips. And with other tongues will I speak to this people. And this is the rest. Amen. This is the Sabbath. Amen. And I'll give to and all this they would not hear. Walked away and wagged their heads. Amen. And when on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell upon those people, and they acted like drunk men and women, staggered under the impact of the Holy Spirit, and they walked away and wagged their heads and said, This people's drunk, full of new wine, and so forth. 
It absolutely was a light. Yes. The word that had been prophesied made manifest. Amen. Amen. So is it in every age. Amen. The word made manifest come to life is the light of that age. Amen. There the word made manifest. It's like was it Genesis 1. Well, God said, let there be light and there was light. Yes. When God said there will be a son and there was a son. Amen. Well, God said in Joel 2.28, It shall come to pass in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy upon my hands, maids and maids, servant, I'll pour out my spirit. Your young man shall see visions. Your old man shall see dreams. And all these things that he promised. When it, the Holy Ghost fell was a light upon that word. Amen. When the word was made manifest, then it become light. Amen. He is the light. He is the light. That we should follow. He is the only light. The angels found light and followed it to him. Now, in all ages, God has set forth so much of his word for each age. God always sends somebody that that word can get into and show the light of it. At every age, it does the same thing. Always does that. He was a fulfillment, as I said, of all the divine, holy powers of the prophets. They were minor gods. When the word of the Lord came to a man, Jesus said himself, and he was a God. Yes. You know that. Yes. He said, if your law said, and your fathers back there, call them who the word of God came to, call them gods. Yes. How can you condemn me, say, when I said I'm the son of that God? Yes. Okay? Yes. When the very God himself, who spoke the word through the prophets, he was a manifestation of that spoken word. Yes. Yes. If the prophet was called a God because he was the manifestation of another prophet's word, how could you condemn him when he was the same thing? Amen. He was the Son of God, Amen. as he shall be called the Son of God. He was a long-promised Messiah that the world had waited on. He was the Messiah's promise made manifest. Look at him when he stood there. He said, if I do not the works of my Father, then condemn me. See, but if you can't believe me, believe the works that I do. They testify who I am. They tell you who I am. You see that blind, darkened hour that they live in? They couldn't see it. They just couldn't understand how could he be that. How can he be any son of God when he's born right down here in Bethlehem? If he only knew the word said it would come that way. Amen. Why, his father Joseph is a carpenter. His mother, why, it's actually believed amongst our brethren that he was born illegitimately. See, but yet the Word of God said that. He said, search the Scriptures. Amen. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are the very ones that testify who I am. Amen. They are the ones that testify me. This Holy Scriptures. Then what was it? God's light. No wonder He said, I am the light of the world. Amen. Not only did He say, I am the light, but He said, ye are the light. Amen. If His Word is in you, bearing record of itself, then you are light of the world. Notice, we find out, light of each age made manifest, just the same. Then I want to ask the question as before time gets away, why, why, then were they, uh, did they turn it down? How could they do it? When the, the very Bible that they was reading was being made manifest before them. I study real hard now. I remember I'm talking to many people at this time, you see. Not just four or five hundred here, but I'm I'm talking to many thousands. Stop just a minute. Stop your tape recorder and ask the question why would religious man, good man, why would Joseph question? See? Why would you because he never searched the scripture? Why did the priest question. One reason they didn't, they knew it. Nicodemus well expressed it. He said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher from God. No man could do what you do except God be with him. We're aware of that. But what was it? Their traditions kept them from doing it. Then why were they, did they reject the Messiah? Is Why did they reject that light? Here's the word that they know was coming to pass. But when the Word was made manifest to show that the Word of God had been fulfilled. Compare that with today. Amen. When they're written in the Word, that would take place. 
then why did those men reject it? Yeah. Teachers. Amen. Because they were living in a glare of another life. Amen. That's it. There's living in a glare. That's the thing they're doing today. They're living, the reason they turn it down is because they're living in a glare of another light. See? Amen. Now, they was living in a glare of what Moses said. They claimed. They was living in a glare of what another age had passed by. And that's the very reason today that this message, that Jesus Christ still is the same, Amen. is turned down because... The people are living in glares of other ages. Amen. The same reason. They turn it down. Now we notice. And Webster says that a glare is kind of a false light. A glare is a false light. Is there anything a glare? It's like, like a mirage on the road. You go down the road, many of you driving cars, and look down ahead of you. When you see that sun on the ground, it reflects a light. And like a mirage, it looks like there's water all over the road. But when you get there, there's nothing there. It's only a false mirage, the glare of a true light. That's what the devil's doing today. He's showing people a mirage. A council of churches. A group of denominations which will turn out to be false. Because it's because there is a real light shining. That real light wasn't shining, the mirage couldn't be there. Real light shines. And that's they're living in a glare of another age. Another thing for it's hidden, passed on. Now, a glare of this mirage is false. It's a glare of the sun. And that's why they did the same thing. A false glare of the true light. Now, it proved to be that He was the true light. He was the light. Why did they know that He was the light? How could you know He was the light? Because the Word that was promised was made manifest through Him. So He was the light of that spoken Word. Amen. 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 Oh, that would almost make me a Pentecostal Baptist shout. <laughs> Notice, think of it. A glare. See? Living in a glare. But when the true word is living, that's the light. What God said. Now what if God said in the beginning, uh, let there be light. <laughs> well, and uh, there was something else appeared. See? Just a mirage. See? It wouldn't have been though what God said. No, it wouldn't have been. What if God said, let there be light and more fog came? See? It wouldn't have been light. But the reason light come, it was His Word manifested. Amen. And today when God has said such things will take place at this time, and you see it doing it, what is it? It's the light on God's Word. Yeah. It's Word being made light. Yeah. Manifest itself. Now, they said, who do you say we are? Why, well, said... You try to, we know that you're crazy. Why, you're a Samaritan. You haven't got your right mind. Well, you try to, who can tell? We know you're born in sin. We don't know where you come from. We have no record of your identification in our groups. Wow, you're crazy. You got a devil. Yeah. See? Say, well, you're out of your mind. But he was actually the genuine, Amen. true light of God shining. Amen. Amen. And the glare had put up their eyes out. We have Moses is our God. He said, if you would have believed Moses, you'd have known me. And if you'd believe Jesus and the Bible, you'd know this hour. Amen. They said, well, we're Christians. We, if you were, you would know the acts of Christ for this day. You'd know it. Jesus said, all those prophets spoke of me. And if you believe those prophets, you'll know me. My works identify because what they said I do, I do it. And who can condemn me now of unbelief? And still they didn't see it. Why? Their eyes were put out with a glare. See, the glare of something else. That they had taken what the true spoken word was. Now, think of it. Think of it. They claim that they believe that word. Yeah. 
but their traditions had turned their faces from the true word to a glare. Amen. Therefore, they couldn't see the real thing. Amen. So is it today. Amen. So has it been in every age. See, the, the true word shines, but they have been so traditionalized that they can't see that word. They're looking at a glare and they're blind. A glare will blind you. It's an arc off of it. It'll blind you. And it'll, when it, the, Jesus said, you are blind, yes. leading the blind. Amen. They should have been able to see it, to see who he was. But they didn't because they was living in that glare. Now, a glare, as I said, is a false light, a mirage, a false conception of the true light. False conception. It's something that, that's supposed to look like it. But it isn't that. Now, the only way they could tell the difference, because the very things that Jesus did proved who he was. Amen. That he was the light. They thought they was in the light. But now, if you just stop a minute and consider who is in the light then. Amen. Now, today, if such a rational mistake was made by the churchmen of that day, such a rational thing was done, brethren, don't you... Think that it's time that we stopped and considered what is light? Amen. Amen. Let us not make such a rational mistake. Amen. But you're doing it. You've already done it. And knew it not. Same as it was then. Now stop just a minute and find out what the Word says for today. If they had stopped and thought, here he is fulfilling to the letter exactly what the Word said he would do. And he challenged them as I'm challenging you. Amen. I'm challenging you to look in the Word. Amen. Search the Scripture. Amen. See if this isn't the hour. Amen. Search the Scripture. So in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me. Amen. They are they that testify of this work today. Amen. The works itself testifies. That is being done and the scripture says it will be done so it's the light of the hour. God's word said so. Your traditions and things is exactly what the Bible said. Like those who wagged their heads and walked away. All the tables become full of vomit. The Bible said. And that's where they, well, they wouldn't believe it. They wagged their heads and gentlemen do you realize and brethren do you realize this that when you are rejecting the very thing that God's vindicating before you, that you're doing the same thing they did? Right. Going back to your traditional vomit? Right. As a dog goes to its vomit, if it made him sick the first time, it'll make him sick the second time. Yeah. If the Catholic Church being organized made the first organization brought sickness to the church, so will Lutheran, Methodist, and all the rest of them. Baptist, Amen. Presbyterian, and Pentecostal. Amen. A dog goes back to its vomit, and a sow goes back to her water. Yes. Yeah. We're getting to that in a few minutes, the Lord with me. Glare. Walking in a glare. A mirage, a false conception of true life. He proved that he was the light because he, being in the way in a minority, oh my, millions against him. There was not one-sixth of the people, one-ninth of the people on the earth ever knowed he was here. Amen. Not, I guess, one-hundredth one of the Jews, or hardly one-fiftieth of them, or fortieth of them, I'll say. Maybe less than that. Of his own country ever knowed he was there. And them that did know he was there considered him a false a something because the denomination told him that's what he was. Amen. But yet he was the true light that had been spoke since Genesis in the beginning. Yeah. And ask them to search the scriptures and find out if he wasn't living just in that time. If he, the works that he did didn't fulfill exactly what was promised at that Amen. time. Amen. Amen. What a serious thing it is, brother. We're living in a tremendous time. He proved to be the right. He was the very light that they claimed they were worshiping. They claimed to be worshiping that light. And so is it today. They claim they're worshiping that. Pentecostals claim it. Yes, amen. They claim they are. Yes, it's so blind they can't see it. Amen. Why? They organize and by the glare in their face. They, a tradition is what some people set together and said, we'll go and make this and this and this and that. Now we're going to come to why that has to happen. The Lord will. 
Notice, his works was the living word itself. What he did was the living word itself. Showing he was that light that had been promised since the beginning of the world. He was that light. His light on the promised word of the age made it live to exactly what the promise said it would do. But they had it so turned around until they couldn't see it. See, but he was the light of that age. He was the light that they claimed to be worshiping. They thought that they were worshiping the very God of creation. They was living in worship and declare. And Jesus said, you worship me in vain. Yes. Teaching for doctrine the traditions of man. Right. And not the Word. Amen. He is the Word and He was the Word made manifest. Amen. They ought to have known it. Amen. I hope that can break through every horse heard. Amen. Right. That it is the Word made manifest. Oh, say, oh, we have the Word. Well, the Word, everybody pack a Bible wants to. But when the Word is vindicated, Amen. made Amen. manifest, Amen. well, say, well, we believe. Yes, sir, they believed all the way along. So does Satan. Amen. Those Pharisees who could condemn them not believing. But they didn't believe the Word for the hour. Amen. They were worshiping the glare of something else. That's the same thing they're doing today. Amen. They're keeping up Luther's traditions or... Uh, Wesley's traditions and the rest of them, the Pentecostal traditions, but what of the hour? Amen. The yeah. Pharisees was keeping up their traditions. Yeah. But behind their traditions was the true Word of God yeah. coming to shine forth, and when it did, it blinded their eyes. Yeah. They couldn't see it because it was watching something else. So is it today. May God let that soak in. But it really hits home to the people that should believe it. It's later than you think. Amen. My son, Billy Paul, he talks in his sleep, but he doesn't have dreams very often. He had one the other night that shook him up. So they dreamed he was at a church, and, and they, I hadn't come in yet, so come in, fire was flying out of the eyes. And I said, the time is here. It's over. And uh, everybody began screaming. I came, my children, and me and my wife said, I can't get Sarah to ask the blessing at the table, and so forth. And I said, he said, I've got to go get Lois and, and the baby. I said, Lois can't come now. The baby's too young to know. Billy, the hour is here. We must go. I said, it's midnight now, before daylight. Uh, Jesus will be here. If it isn't, then I'm a false witness of Christ. And somebody spoke up and said, No man knows the minute or hour. I said, Minute or hour. I said, Sometime between now and daylight. And I said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. I said, But we're at the time. Let's go. And we got in the car and started. And we started up the mountain. And when we did, it was it looked like the light was coming in the skies, but dark upon the earth. He said, I pulled off the side road and held my hands over like this. Fire still flying from the eyes. And he said, I said, Lord, I did this at your command. I did this just because that you told me to do it this way. I did these things according to what you've told me. And I motioned to a big granite mountain. And a, a light without hands cut a stone out of the mountain, weighing hundreds of tons. And here it comes. Hey. I said, turn your heads. Don't look. It'll be, all be over just in a few minutes. Oh, I said, then a great God. holy hush come everywhere. as this stone come towards your place? It may be later than we think. Oh, there, see, that's exactly scriptural, you see. The stone without hands cut out of mountain. And uh, so uh, one of these days, it's going to be that way when you're going to scream for something. I said to him, you've already had that time. God has constantly warned you time after time. Yeah, I said, even if it's my own kid or whoever it is, the hour is here. I can only say what he's told me to say and he'll be here. And it was. And, and then all of a sudden, here he come, the stone cut out of the mountain without hands. Daniel saw that, you know, back many years ago. And Billy knew nothing about that. But it was, a, it was a dream sent to him from the Lord. Now, see, they claim to be worshiping that very God that they were making fun of. And the same thing has reversed again today by the same reason. Living in a glare instead of the light. Great light says a shine. All right, look what darkness we're in today. Look what's going on today. Look at murder, rape, strife. Why it's come to pass, I believe it was Billy Graham said in his last meeting, in 10 years from now, every citizen of California has to pack a gun to protect themselves. You can't put enough law enforcement. The people just gone insane. Shooting, murder, rapes, everything. See, it's just gone wild. See, up on the streets. It's a, it's a day we're living in, a sodomite day. See, but there is a light shining. Amen. If you can only look. If they'd only see, look into the Word and see what's supposed to be in this hour, they would know what's trying to be done. Now, they claim they're worshiping that light. So did they claim they're worshiping that light. 
but they will worship it in the glare of another light instead of the real. See, he was the light. Creeds and traditions in their blinded condition had turned them from the true light of the promised word. The word that God had vindicated by Jesus, the light of the world, came and made that word live right exactly through his time, exactly to the days. He'll be cut off in the midst of the 70 weeks. That's right. Which is the three and a half years of his prophecy. The Messiah would come, the prince, and would prophesy in three and a half days of this, then he'd be cut off from the living to make uh, atonement. And that's exactly, he preached three and a half years. And in the very psalm that David said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The 22nd psalm. All my bones, they stare at me. They wag their heads. They pass by me. 850 years beforehand when David sung that song in the spirit. And it was considered prophecy and given. They're singing them songs in the temple when the same sacrifice is hanging on the cross. With his yeah. hands that pierced. And they pierced my hands and my feet. Yeah. See, there they why They were living in a glare. They didn't see the light. Could you imagine a sensible person doing that? No more than I can imagine a sensible person running down the basement and getting a must and pulling his doors together and saying, I refuse to see there's light. It's insanity. And a spiritual slip somewhere. When a man sees that the Bible has promised this and see it living right out before him and made manifest and then continually stay in those creeds and things out there that reach him. It's a spiritual delinquency. That's exactly right. Here he was. Now, he was... He was the light of the world, and the world knew he came to his own. His own knew him not. He came into the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. That's right. But as many as did know him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. Amen. To them that believed on him. <laughs> Remember, we cannot live by yesterday's light. No, right. Yesterday's light is gone. Right. It isn't no more. It, the, yesterday's light is only a memory. Yesterday's sunlight is only a memory. Right. Or it's history. We cannot live in yesterday's light. No more. And the same, though it's the same sun, the same sun, but each day it brings forth its strength a little stronger to ripen the grain for the harvest. Amen. See? The sun comes today, gets a little stronger each day. Now it'll get a little stronger. A little stronger. And finally the wheat that's laying there, it'll, it'll go taking life. After a while, the, the life will come up. Then a little stronger, a little stronger. March, April, May. June, July, she's in the harvest then, you see. The same sun shining today in, in January or December. It's up there bathing that snow and melting it down on that grain, bringing it water. It's the same sun, but that wheat could not live in that same sunlight in June. See? It can't do it. See, the sun comes a little stronger each day. And the grain should be a little more matured to receive the sunlight. Amen. That's what's the matter today. The grain that was sold in the early fathers back there in, in Luther and Wesley and them, it dwarfed. It can't take the sun. The sun kills it. It refused to grow. It, cut, it took itself from the stalk light and come over here and made itself a own little thing, become a husk, then. No life in it. The grain should be maturing and getting stronger as the sun becomes stronger each day. Now let's watch a minute. We watch the church ages. There's seven church ages. In those church ages, each one, watch how he spoke to them what would do. How the grain would mature and come down to this last hour here. This last hour that we're living in. So the churches must do the same thing. See, the churches. Now look, Luther sold a grain. And Luther was a grain. And he sold it. All right? So was Wesley. And also, so was Pentecostal. So was the Baptists, the Nazarenes. But you see, now, Luther would not go back and live in the light of the first denomination, Catholic. No, sir. He was another light. That was God writing something. Now, a little minority come out of that, that Lutheran uh, uh, revival. Then come along the Wesley revival. And then in that, well, they couldn't go back and do the Lutherans. Right. Okay? And now along come the Pentecostals. And then the Pentecostals organized and done the same thing, taking the husk. Notice, but the grain goes right on. Yes. Amen. Now we're in another age. Amen. Why won't they receive it? Why won't they see that the grain is matured? Here's the promised word for this day. Right. Why don't they see it? Because they're living in Lutheran glare, yes. Wesleyan glare, Baptist glare, Pentecostal glare. Amen. They're living in the glare of another light. Amen. 
That's the reason they can't receive the light of the total word being vindicated as God promised them seven seals where the whole mystery was revealed would come back and tell why these mysteries was done like that. And yet when that comes in, they walk farther away from it than ever. Amen. They're without excuse. God has done it through spirit, through revelations. He's, he's proved it perfectly by scientific and everything else that it's the truth. Amen. that it's the truth Amen. and still they want to live in a Pentecostal glare yeah. I am the assemblies I am the oneness I am the church of God I am this see living in a glare of an age 40, 50 years ago Amen. living in a Lutheran glare living in a Wesley a Baptist a Presbyterian or some Nazarene glare of another church age that went on and organized and done the same thing and refused and reject the light when it's actually shining and you're living in a mirage Amen. Amen. I'll say that reverently Amen. But you're not to hurt you, but to wake you up. Yeah. You're living in a mirage. What if Jesus said, Well, you're blind, and you're leading the blind? Yeah. They can, he tried to tell them, and then he said, Let them alone. Yeah. If a blind leads a blind, they'll all fall in the ditch. Yeah. That's the hour I've come to. Yes. Yeah. So go to stagger, I can't help it. That's right. I've done all I can do. Amen. I've done exactly. I've done this at your command, Lord. Lord you're a witness. Amen. Since 19 and 33, down on the river on that light, there you see, shine down. It's been right here in the tabernacle and witness to you all these years and everything it said has come to pass. Amen. And continually they go on. My God. Let the blind lead the blind. Amen. I'll just wait for that hour. He'll arrive one of these days. Amen. Notice, living in a glare of Luther, living in a glare of Wesley, living in them glares back there, that's the reason they can't see true light. If they would stop for a few minutes and just pick up the Bible and read it, they would see that the, this is light promised for the hour. Amen. 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 Yeah. Now, we're going to take some of these things in a minute. He promised, according to Malachi 4, these things would happen. Amen. He Amen. promised all through the Scriptures they would happen. Yeah. See? Notice. Israel also are type in the journey. Look. Eating manna, which was their light life. They give them strength, life. Is that right? Yes. Israel could not eat manna that was yesterday had fallen. Amen. It was contaminated. Amen. It was rotten. Amen. It was no good for them. They'd die over it. Right. The manna that kept them alive yesterday would kill them today. Right. The Bible said it got germs in it, contaminated. Amen. And the man, they had to get new manna every day. Amen. 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 And what is it? The people that live on manna of Luther, Wesley, and them back in there, you're eating contaminated stuff that's killing you spiritually. Amen. 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 It's killing you. Dead in your traditions. Yesterday's Luther's manna would not work for Methodists. Methodist manna would not work for Pentecost. Pentecostal manna will not work for the day. Amen. See what I mean? Every day it come, day by day fresh. Amen. And so has it to the church ages. Luther's manna was a message of justification. Wesley's message was a manifestation of sanctification. Pentecostal was a restoration of the gifts. But this is introducing the headstone. Amen. The last day, the bride tree. It's contrary to all of it. And yet it's the same light for the matured, like the same sun shining today will be right in the grain for the harvest in July. See what I mean? But the light today won't do any good back there in July. It's stronger. The wheat's more advanced. It's ready to take it. Amen. 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 Certainly is. Amen. It couldn't take it now. It can then. The season wasn't right then. It is now. Amen. You can't go against God's nature. He's got a law. Amen. And the contrary, that law kills your plant. You've got to go according to God's spoken laws. And His laws is His word. Amen. Any law is a word spoken. And a word is a thought manifested. See? Now we, we know that that's true. A vision is what? The Word of God or something foretold or a forecast of an event. And a vision that the prophets had and Jesus had, Paul had, and all of them telling this day was a forecast of what would happen. Amen. 
And here we see the forecast being made manifest that people don't even recognize it. Amen. 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 Right. God help them. See what I mean? Yes. Now, yesterday's manna. Look here. Did you ever notice the sun, S-U-N, has traveled east to the west as it's went each time? Did you notice that? Amen. And notice, the church ages did the same thing. Amen. What? The sun, S O S U N, started in the east and civilization has traveled with the sun. God has spoken light. For them to live in. They've come on following the sun. See where it was going. Life itself, when you're born, it's like a sun. You go on right on to the setting of the sun. From your birth to the setting of the sun. Man has traveled westward always. The oldest civilization we have is China. In the eastern countries. Jerusalem. And notice, she keeps traveling westward as it goes. And as it goes on and on to the west. So has the church age travel the same way by the S-O-N of God. Amen. Look, Paul, the early church started in the east. It went from there, jumped across the, 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 the sea over into Germany. It's made three pulls. Look here, from Asia down in, in Palestine, it jumped across the ocean to Germany. That was Luther. And it jumped from Luther across the English Channel over into England by Wesley. And from Wesley, she jumped to the West Coast, Amen. to the United States. And this, if you go any further, it's coming back east again. Amen. 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 This is the evening time. Amen. 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 All right. Look how the church ages has fought. Luther, Paul first, back in the early age. Then come down to Ireland, Irenaeus, and so forth. On down into France. From there, over into Germany, over into England, constantly going west. Amen. And now we can't go no far. Amen. Amen. This is the last age. Amen. And what does the Bible say about this last age? Amen. See, geographically, chronologists, any way you want to take it, scripturally, first scripture, of course, first. Evidence. Historically. Any way you want to take it, we're at the end. Amen. The last church age. And watch. As it went forward, it grew stronger and stronger. And so has the real little minority of the church. Grown from justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and now to the coming capstone. Shaping itself up. No more organizations. After this, there won't be no more. See? Can't be. See, we're on the West. Just to show you through all types and everything else. And look at those three jumps. Three pulls. We'll get into that tonight. See, see how we're at the end time. It's just uh, S U N has traveled like S O N. S O N like S U N. The church has come the same thing from the seven church ages and so forth. Civilizations moved right on to the west, and the church has moved right on to the west. And now, if we go any further than what we are now, we come back east again. You leave the west coast, you go right back into China, Japan. Right back in again, 7,000 miles across, and go right back to the east again. So east and west has met. That's all of it. We're at the end. There's nothing left. And the same thing has happened today. It happened back there. The same thing is met at the west that was met at the east. The people living in a glare of another light that was absolutely trying to show forth the light was come and reject it because it got the glare instead of the light. Amen. <clears throat> Oh, and there was great light in the land of the Gentiles. Zebulun, Nephilim, of Galilee, in the Galilee, land of the Gentiles. This is the seventh church age. Remember. And each time that that sun began to shine in the east is the same sun that shines in the west. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And the same spirit that's been all down through the ages like that is the same sun today. Yeah. Only what is it? Just like right in the season. The sun that's now will be the same sun that ripens the grain this fall, yeah. this autumn. See? But what is it? It's this sun plus what it will be. Amen. And today in this last age is what they were plus this. Amen. Amen. And that they will live back there as a dwarf. Yeah. Go down into a busty old inner and old nominational basement and creed and pull their blinds. I say, I just refuse to see it. It's all nonsense. And when the very Bible that they claim to believe is being identified by the same Holy Spirit. Amen. Bringing light. 
in the last days. Did you notice, and watch real close there in Malachi, how he, a lot of that, the faith of the fathers to the children, and the children to the fathers? See, the same spirit, where it raised back out, or where it raised his here again, the same thing? They just bites the mercy exactly sitting right back again? Because why? East and West is met. Just exactly right under our face, and yet they don't see it. Why? No wonder Jesus said, just let them alone then. They're blind, lead the blind. They'll all fall in the ditch. The light of other ages only reflected this light. See, the sun today only reflects as a reflection of the sun that will be this July or August of God for the harvest. And the son of Luther, Martin Luther, and Wesley, and Sankey, Finney, Knox, Calvin, Moody, all them others, them great men back in there that had those light, John Smith of the Baptist Church, and Alexander Campbell of the Camelite Church, or the so-called disciples of Christ, Christian Church, and whatever more names he got for them. All them men back there in their ages was only reflecting what it will be here at the end. And then here the children, immediately after them founders, what did they do? They didn't stay on the stalk. They pulled away from it and made yeah. themselves a little husk thing out here, yeah. which you get away from the real source of life you have no life. Amen. You take a husk off the thing and plant it out here in the ground, it'll lay there and rot. Amen. And so are you trying to eat rotten manna Amen. from back in them days. The harvest is ripe. Amen. Jesus Amen. has a table spread oh, for the saints of God Amen. on right and food of the day by the gospel light that vindicates it. Amen. The saints eat the bread. Just think. The old husk of yesterday. See, don't plant it back there. It's rotten. It cannot, it cannot stay with it. No, sir. It will not do no good. It won't grow. It's all for the life. And the Word is the life. That's right. The husk drops off. The little beard falls away. Things like that. It just denominates itself and drops off. It refuses to go on with the life. But the light vindicates it. Oh, my. Yesterday, yesterday. It's oh, my. How we are to see that. See, that the rotten things of yesterday don't eat them today. See? It's got worms in it. You know these little wiggle tails? I call them, I don't know. I, I don't know much about germ life, but I know we always call them wiggle tails. It gets in anything when it gets a little rotten. See? I don't want it then. If you're satisfied with it, go ahead. But not me. But remember, you say then, why was it good yesterday? If you only knew that the very little hull that was on the wheat at the beginning, if it abides in the grain, it makes the grain further. Yeah. That's the very thing that makes the wheat flour. Yeah. It's what was yesterday. But if it separates itself from the grain and don't mature, then it goes away. But if it goes through the process of life-giving process, as it dies out, it just blends into something else. It makes the grain. Amen. If it isn't, where does it come from? Amen. 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 You get it? Amen. Like the Queen of England once. She went to a great paper company and she said uh, she would like to see through the paper uh, mills. So they showed her the paper mills many years ago and before they went to making the and stuff. So they find uh, making papers out of it. So they, after a while, she come into a room that was nothing but a big old pile of dirty rags. And she said, where did this come from? What's this? Oh, she said, the, the, the president of the plant said, this is, uh, is what uh, will make the paper out of these dirty rags. She said, that make paper? Yes. So she couldn't hardly believe it. So after she was gone, the man took the same dirty pile of rags and run them through a certain process and brought them out with clean, pure paper. You know, it been, went through a process and made real and put her profile in it and said to her, reflected herself in this, what she called dirty rags. Now, that's what it is. The dead things of yesterday, the message of Luther, the message of Wesley, the message of Pentecost, if it can only go through the process of God's Holy Spirit in the Amen. word of a vindication... Yes. It'll bring forth the reflection of Jesus Christ, Amen. the King. Amen. But if you leave it lay, it's dirty rags. Amen. It's got to be molded into something else. Luther has got to be molded into Wesley, and Wesley has got to be molded into Pentecost, and Pentecost has got to be molded into Christ. Amen. It goes through a process. So has the gospel gone through a process? It's processing Luther's age of justification. We believe that. Amen. Wesley's of sanctification, we believe that. The Pentecostals of the restoration of the gifts for the Holy Ghost, we believe that. Certainly. 
but mold it all together, what do you come out with? Jesus. Amen. Right? The same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. They come out with Jesus. When a man in a foundry is making a bell, he's got a certain tone he has to put in it. When he's setting his mold and pouring his iron, he puts in so much brass, so much steel, so much copper. Why? He knows just exactly how much to put in. But to make give it the right tone. And that's what Jesus has done by his bride. Amen. He had to put Amen. so much Luther, so much Methodist, and so much Presbyterian, so much Pentecost in it. But what does he come out with? His own reflection. Oh, Why is it? It's like Amen. the pyramid message. You see, it's heaping right up this coming to the minority. To the headstone. Yeah. The ministry of Jesus Christ on earth has to be the same as the ministry he had, or he can't come to it. Right. It's like the head to the feet. The head feet's not the head, but the head packs the feet. There makes the feet. It does where to go. You get it? Right. Beautifully. It's the light of the hour. Wesley was a great light, like he said to John the Baptist. He was a great light for his hour. Yeah. Sure he was. No. Yes, sir. The clean rags are the dirty rags of yesterday. If you remain that way, it's got to, it'll just become dirty rags all the time. It served its purpose as clothing, but now it's become paper. Yeah. Justification served its time and justification under Luther. Then it had become sanctification yes. through Wesley. Yeah. And sanctification served its time to become the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost will serve His time until the Holy Spirit, which is the only one God, blends into the church of the church into Christ that makes Jesus Christ reflected on the earth. Amen. 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 What He promised you in the Bible. Amen. Might not believe it. I can't make you do that. I'm only responsible for the Word. Amen. That's right. So you see it? Amen. Do you see that? Amen. If you do, it'll be like the, the man one time went, to do it, went over to Wales during the time of the Welsh Revival. A bunch of men went to the United States, so they rose down and they said they wanted to find out what building they was holding this Welsh revival. And many of you remember the Welsh revival. Great revival broke out amongst the, the Welsh people. And Wales, so these men, these great big ministers and so forth, went to the United States, they doctors of divinity. They wanted to go over and see what great thing they'd done, you know. So they're walking down the street and they said, met a little old policeman standing on the corner of this club around, you know, and whistling a hymn like that. They said, well, he's just whistling a hymn. We might go up and see him. See what he's going to do. Well, I asked him a question. So they went up to him and said, uh, Sir, where is the Welsh Revival at? He tipped off his hat. He said, Sir, the Welsh Revival's held in here. Oh, oh, that's it. He was the Welsh Revival. Oh, God. If we can only, only understand that we are the reflection of Jesus Christ's word, they benefit. You are the reflection of his word. Yes. Okay? Where is the Welsh Revival held? What building is it? And he said, Sir, it's in my heart. Amen. <laughs> it was the Welsh Revival. Amen. That's right. And today the church ought to be Jesus Christ in action upon the earth because I live, you live also, and my life will be in you. The works that I do, you'll do also. See? Now the church has got to get to that place. To, and he promised it would do it, and it will. It's got to come that way. So you see, that's what takes place. We we got to be that way. He is the light. So was Noah, the light in his day. He was the light. Amen. Noah was that light. Yeah. He was the light to what? To make God's work. I will destroy a man upon the earth that I've created. Build an ark. And all desires to come into it will be saved. Noah walked out there and said, there's one way. And that's the ark. They said the old crazy fanatic. He was the Word made manifest. Amen. Noah was the light of the hour. Amen. Sure was. His day, his age, he sprung forth the light. Moses was the light of his hour. I'll surely visit you, God said to Abraham. And I'll come down and I'll take out of my people with a strong hand. I'll show my power in Egypt. And when Moses up there met that burning bush up there and found out the I Am was in that bush... Moses went down there and he was the light. Amen. 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 No wonder he could take some dust and blow it up and say, let there come fleas upon the earth. He had the word of God. Amen. What happened? The dust began to blow and the fleas began to come into existence. Amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow, he was a manifestation of the light of God's Amen. word. Of Amen. Amen. He was a prophet. What he said come to pass. Amen. He was a light of that day. Amen. He was God's light. Pharaoh might have had everything he wanted to have, and the rest of them, all the priests had what they wanted, but Moses was the light. Amen. Why? He was showing forth God's Word manifesting. Yeah. 
God promised, I'll bring him out under a strong hand and I'll get myself glory. Amen. That's what he was yeah. doing. Amen. That's the reason Moses proved that he could create. Not because he wanted to create, but because God told him to. Amen. We'll not go to the congregation say, tomorrow, the Lord God has just spoke to me. Take a handful of dust and throw it up in the sky like this and call for it. There's none here, but it'll be there. Amen. 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 All right. Oh, I hope you're not asleep. No. Oh! Glory to God. Manifestation! He said, I'm sent. God did say to our fathers, surely he had visited us down here and take us out. I've come to prove you the hours of hand. Get rid of what you got. Let's go. Amen. Yes. Some of them said, well, I believe Dathan said, I don't think there's any hurry. We shouldn't be all excited about this. And looked like it failed four or five times, but just the same, it moved off. Amen. They thought they'd come out and say, we stoned this Moses. Get him away from us. We don't want him in our, our group here. Moses has moved God on anyhow because he was a light. Yeah. He was the light of the hour. Why he had what was it? God manifesting His promise word through Moses, and Moses was the light. Amen. Elijah was the light. Amen. Go up there, sit on that hill. I've commanded the ravens to feed you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. He come back down with thus saith the Lord. Amen. Not even dew will fall from heaven till I call for it. Amen. Sun might shine. You might call for all the clouds and do anything you want to, but not even dew will come till I call for it. Why is he the light? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Light. Light. Amen. Hallelujah. It was the word of God made manifest. They thought he was crazy sitting up there. He had porters feeding him. Them starving to death. They want to live in the traditions? Go ahead. Not Moses. Or not Elijah. He was living right in the light. Set up there with a book, Cedrath, and just having a good time. Having meals and somebody take care of him and everything. They thought he was crazy, but he was, he was the light. They say, hey, what become that old holy roller we had around here? Well, you know what? Somebody was hunting the other day and said they see him sitting up there with the light. Way up on top of that mountain there. I bet that old fellow's about dried up at this time. Oh, no. He was a light. He was a light. <laughs> he was a light of God All right. of his day. John, when he came to the earth, went out in the wilderness to get his education from God, not the seminary. He had to introduce the Messiah. So when he came forth, Jesus said he was a bright and shiny light. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? He was a word. Manifested. Isaiah said so. That's it. That's right. He'd send forth a voice in the wilderness crying, saying, Prepare the way for the Lord and make straight His gate. Make straight the way. He'd cry one voice of one crying in the wilderness. Here He come forth. What was it? Voice of one crying in the wilderness. What was it? Manifestation of the Word. Light. Amen. Same God that spoke in Genesis and spoke this and here come the light. As He said, Let there be light for the sun. The sun come in existence. He said, There be a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Here He come forth. It was the light of the hour. He also said in the last days, Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. It's a mighty hour. Amen. Amen. Crying in the wilderness of Babylon. Come out of her, my Amen. people, that you be not partakers of her sin. Amen. That's not her unclean thing. Amen. Amen. Get away Amen. from it. Amen. Flee Amen. from the wrath that is to come. John yes. said the same thing. The axe is laid to the root of the tree. Didn't even have an education. Didn't talk like even a preacher. He talked about serpents and sticks yes. and trees and axes and things. What he's used to in the wilderness. He wasn't raised up some of this great big fine stuff they have today. Amen. Like they had in that day. He'd come out with his own language. He didn't stand and say, Ah, oh, man, and make all these fancy bows. He'd come right out, out of the wilderness. Right rough. So don't you begin to think, I belong to this and I belong to that. God's able these stones to write you. Amen. Don't you think because you're a Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, you have any hold on God, God's able to take bootleggers and harlots out of the street. Somebody's going to hear it and somebody's going to believe it. He said, Oh, so the axe is laid to the root of the tree. And every tree that don't believe it's hewed down, cast into the fire. So that was his message. He was the light of the day. Jesus said he was a bright and shining light. And you for a little while desired to walk into it. And what did John say, the prophet? He's standing among you right now. Yeah. I'm not worthy to lose his shoes and as soon as he comes on the scene, I'm going off. Oh, oh my. For he was the light. Amen. There's no two or three lights, no four or five different organizations. It was one light. Amen. There's not nothing as bad as Lutheran Presbyterian. Christ is the light and the light of the light. And the word manifested is the light of the hour. Let there be light and there was light. Yes, sir. Let there be light. And there is light. He spoke there would be light in this day and there is light. Amen. Amen. Yes. He's coming. 
I believe it. Amen. Look at the promises of this age. Oh, my. Every light that's ever shined, these church ages, we see how they, it's, it's been a pitiful sight. Yeah. You see, rejected in Revelation 3. I have wrote down here Revelation 3, and I know what, what I was referring to then. Look to the promise of this hour, what we're living in, a rejected light. Uh, what did they, they rejected it back there. Why? They're living in a glare. What are they doing today? Same thing. Yes. Sir. Well, I, are you a Christian? I, I'm a Lutheran. I'm a Baptist. I'm Presbyterian. That don't mean one thing. Amen. Just by saying you're the hog pig or anything else you want to call yourself. <laughs> that, that's about how much it means. I, no, no disregards Amen. to you. But if you're taking it to this fundamental part, that's right. Yes. I ask the question, a Christian, that's Christ in you. Yes. And if Christ is in you, then the Word is in you. Amen. And if that, the Word is in you and the light's shining, how are you going to walk out of it? That's right. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. That's the question. That's what's in, in now, the light. The evening lights are shining. The bride tree is blooming. Amen. Oh, remember they pruned that old tree and what the canker worm left, the palm, palm worm eaten, what the palm worm left, the caterpillar eaten, what the Methodist left, the Baptist eaten, what the Baptist left, the Pentecostal eaten. He said this tree is a jewel there was cut all down to a stump. But he won't know if it would live again. Oh, yeah. He reserved, he reserved that tree. Yes, sir, for it was his bride. And he said, I will restore, saith the Lord. Amen. What is it? I'll bring it forth, all that the Lutheran eat and the Wesleyan eat and all of them, and I will restore it because it's all still in the root of the tree. See, it's laying down on the ground. It's like the sap that went out, as he said about the sister. It's laying there, and the trumpet of God shall sound someday, and them elected Lutheran, Methodist, Baptist, that had nothing to do with any organization. Luther never organized nothing. Moody never organized nothing. It was that group of Ricky's after him is what done the all organization. Right. Yeah. Up the husk. John Smith organized nothing. None of the rest of them organized. It was the light of the hour. Luther, Wesley, none of the rest of them. It was that group afterwards come by that made the organization. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Ghost never organized nothing Pentecost. Amen. Pentecost is an experience, Amen. not a denomination. Amen. It never organized nothing. Oh, no, no. But the man who claimed to be Pentecost organized it. That's the husk and her dying. Yeah. Instead of pressing it into the paper to make the full image of Jesus Christ come forth. No, they pull themselves out so there's nothing to do into it. Amen. Just let them alone. But we find out this light, this tree, Christ rejected again by the church. Why? For the same cause that he did first. The old false glares of lights of other days. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8 says he is. He's the same today as he was then. Because he does the same thing that he did. Amen. The same word that Christ... Listen, I want to just take you now. And let this be personal. I don't know if I'm a little decide whether to turn that off now or not. <laughs> For that tape. I'll just let it stay there. Amen. Watch this. Amen. He is the same yesterday and forever. Amen. Watch. His works that he did manifest itself. Now listen close. When he stood there in John 14, 12, he said, The works that I do shall you do also. Greater than this shall you do. For I go unto my Father. Amen. Now he said it. Yes, he Heavens and earth will pass away, but that word will never fail. Right. Now if we're at the last end of the age, where is them greater works going to come? All right. Amen. All right. We're here. Amen. We haven't got... Listen, if the Roman calendar is right, we got six... We've got 36 years left. Every 2,000 years, the world meets your end. First 2,000 years, destroyed by water. Second 2,000 years, Christ come. This is 1964 coming up. 36 years. Now the Egyptian astronomy calendar says we're 17 years out. It's 17 years advanced from that. That will leave 19 years left. Jesus said the work will be cut short for the elected sake of the being open and saved. Where are we at? Amen. The works that I do shall you also, same kind, but greater, shall you do. Now watch. Listen close. Get on your, I pray that God will open your heart and your mind to understanding. So that you'll understand without saying it's too much here. Notice, he said, one day, let's see some of the great work he done. Let's just stop for just a couple of things. Let's think. One time he said, uh, you feed them something to eat. They said, we have nothing. They said, what have you got? Bring me what you've got. And they said, we have uh, five barley loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them to me. And he took the original five barley loaves and began to break the loaves. And from the original, he made bread. 
it fed 5,000. Is that right? Yes. Then he said, and he got a fish, hand me the fish. It was a fish to begin with. And he took off that fish and another fish and another fish and fed 5,000. Is that right? Amen. But in the last days, he had nothing. Amen. He just spoke and said, say it'll be there and it was there. Amen. Not anything in it. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I God. All right. He never had a squirrel. There was none there. No. He just said, let there be, and there was. Amen. Oh, His word's infallible. Amen. Amen. And it has to be fulfilled. Yes. I've got to tell you things that would shake you. See? It's there when He says it's there. Amen. Let Him say it. See? Just exactly. See? The east, the west here has come back and met the east. It was Moses. He even picked up sand and said, let there be fleas and so forth like Amen. that upon the earth. But in this last day, he doesn't take anything. Amen. See? Just the word. Amen. Let it be! It is! Amen. What's said? That's the way it'll be! Amen. I want to testify of some of those things tonight. Amen. Of what's happened. But you can see, he's still God. His words cannot... These works that I do shall you also, and greater than this shall you do. I took a fish to make a fish. You don't even have to have a fish. No. He's still God. It's still the same Son. The same Son of God that took a fish off of a fish. It's the same Son of God today. Amen. These works that I do shall you also, even greater than this will you do. It'll be magnified. Amen. Greater than this shall you do. And people refuse to see it. Mm. Greater works... A false light. Uh, you know, I was just thinking of something. I was referring a lot about England. But I was thinking about a false light. You're not long ago. You all remember that greatest robbery that, that England ever had. Yeah. That was done as a $7 million holdup. Yeah. I don't think there's ever been anything in the world to compare with it. A great holdup recently of $7 million. Even Scotland Yards can't get it figured out. You know how they've done it? By a false light. They put a light on the railroad track. Caution. On down. But it come to a red light and stopped them. And there the robbery taking place just at the right place. A false light gave the greatest robbery that the nations has ever known. It robbed the nations of the greatest holdup. Greatest robbery. It was done by a false light. And the greatest robbery the church of God has ever had is a false light. Amen. A fair denomination. It's robbed them from the power of the Holy Ghost. It's took from the church the very lifeline. Amen. It's robbed them of the word when they accepted a creed instead of the word. Amen. It's robbed. Oh, they claim to have the word. The word lives itself out for the age. It makes itself known. Amen. They claim they had the word too back there in the days of Jesus. Mm-hmm. But he said they saw a great light and they rejected it. Yes. They saw it but rejected it. Oh, false light. Yes, it's cost the church the greatest robbery it ever had. Cold and nominational creeds, brother, won't write them a vindicated word. Amen. No, no green. The Bible said, Jesus said, the Word of God is a, a, a seed that a sower yeah. sowed. See? Amen. And cold creeds won't ripen that Word. Right. No, no. Cold, blizzardy days won't ripen the wheat. No, one it, it takes the warmth of the sunlight Amen. because it was God's spoken Word to do such a thing with. And it'll take the Word spoken of God today to show the saints of God that Jesus Christ lives just the same as He was yesterday Amen. He is today. Amen. Creeds and denominations will never do it. Amen. They're cold and indifferent and the grain will rot right in the ground. It can't come forth under that. That's the reason uh, today we have a, what we do like our precious brother Billy Graham, the great revivalist. I thank God he's using the man. But look what he does. Goes out there amongst them Baptists and Presbyterians. What do you do? Get a bunch of church joiners. Yeah. See where the Southern Baptists is crowing down there because they had the most denominations. Uh, denomination grow more than any other Protestants. The Catholics took them all nearly last year. Yeah. Sit in favor, sure did. Yeah. Don't worry, it's going to take them all because it takes Baptists and all right together. And they're all the one and don't know it. Amen. Amen. The council of, church, council of churches puts them all just the same thing. Amen. Denomination, but why? Why would you want to stay over here or over here as long as you're rejecting this? What difference does it make? Right. Aren't you using the same denominational tags just the same as you are one way? Right. One the beast and the other the mark. So there you are. So this doesn't make any difference. It's where he's been. He stomped his seal of approval in there. You take it. Yeah. And there she all led right straight to the White House and to Washington, D.C. and in the Council of Churches. And there you go. The clergyman taking them right on back exactly what the Bible said they'd do. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. I wish that clock would, didn't go so we're fast. Time, now, just think Amen. now where we're at. Look Amen. at the promises for the day. Reject it again. How the churches have Amen. done it. This last day, the denomination. 
glare, living in the false glare, is the reason that it won't write. That's the reason that this word, you don't see the miracles. A priest interviewed me not long ago, and he said, Mr. Branham, he said, uh, how'd you baptize a, a certain girl that come out of this church that backslid and married a Catholic boy and went into the Catholic church? And he was going to take her into the church. I said, I'll baptize her in Christian baptism. He said, uh, the bishop wants to know. I said, all right, there it is. He said, do you swear to this? I said, I don't swear at all. And he said, uh, he said, if he can't take my word for it, well, that's all right. I, oh my God. I, said, I don't swear. The Bible said, don't swear by heavens. It's God's throne. Earth is his footstool. Let your yes be yes and no, no. I said, you have to take my word for it. I said, well, you, you said Christian baptism. What do you mean by, by mercy? I said, it's the only way Christian baptism is performed. I said, I baptize her in the Ohio River, tuck her under the water in the name of Jesus Christ and brought her up. I baptize her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the only Christian baptism Amen. there is. Amen. I said, yes, sir. He put it down Amen. like that. He said, strange thing. You know, the Catholic Church used to baptize that way. I said, when? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, went ahead and the discussion went on for a while. And he said, well, we are the original Catholic. Knowing there, laid right there, the, the books, you know, and the history on it. I said, that's true. But I said, why don't you do it today? Amen. 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 He said, we have power to remit sins. He said, Jesus, didn't he tell his disciples, whosoever sins you remitted to them, they're remitted? Whosoever sins you retain to them, they're retained? I said, yes, sir, he did. He said, then don't they give the church the authority? Peter was the head of the church. I said, if the church will remit sins the way Peter did it. Amen. I said, now when they asked what must we do to be saved, he said, repent, right. every one of you, right. and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for yeah. the remission Amen. of your sins. Amen. I said, you do that, I'll go with you. Amen. Oh, he said, you're trying to plead the Bible. I said, that's the word. He said, God's in his church. I said, God's in his word. Amen. Amen. Every man of the man's word's a lie. His is the truth. Amen. So there's no way you can see, but there, there they go right on in darkness, and the Protestants by the thousands falling into it. Here they are right down to adopting their creeds and things going right on with it, and the Brother. Word coming right out, proving it. Jesus Christ manifesting Himself, same yesterday and forever, and in that creed glare, they move right on out into darkness. Amen. Amen. Just like they did in Noah's time. Just like they did in all times, they do it again today. Right out in darkness. Why? They reject the light because the creed has blinded them. Oh, what a darkened hour that we are in now. <laughs> yeah, they reject Christ's true eternal life. And that's what does it. Cold denominations can never bring life to the Word of God. Right. Because it brings life to the denomination. Yeah. Yeah. We've got more professed Christians right now. Look here. If the Christian, I ask this priest this. If the, I'll go with you that the Catholic Church was at the beginning at Pentecost, not at Nicaea, Rome. The church never did begin at Nicaea, Rome. Amen. It began at Pentecost, Amen. see, at Jerusalem is where the church began. Amen. But I said, here, I'll admit that these people, them slaves and things that got the Holy Ghost, they masters seen their powers and things, what they were doing, raising the dead, speaking in tongues, casting out devils, foretelling things and prophets among them and so forth, come out with sheepskins around them, eating herbs, come to that Nicaea council and so forth. How great man. And there they come out of there and come up there to that Nicaea council, standing for that word. Yeah. But that bloody 15 days they accepted Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as a creed instead of the Bible doctrine in the name of Jesus Christ. Through that come all the Protestant churches born right into it, the same thing. Yeah. All these other things, a false conception of the Holy Ghost. They took, take the communion, drink the wine. That is the Holy Eucharist, which means Holy Ghost. The priest gives it to you. Now the Bible don't read, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, here come a priest up the road. Collar turned around, said, they got your tongue, take the Holy Eucharist. No, it didn't say, all oh, you people right up here and give me the right hand of fellowship, you Baptist, Methodist, and Baptist, I'll put your name, bring a letter from somewhere. He said they were all in one place in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the room where they were sitting. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there, out into the street, they went staggering like drunk men. Mary and all the rest of them were the impact of the Holy Ghost. When the people said, laughed at them and said, these men are full of new wine. What was it? Blinded by a creed. Amen. That little two before preacher uh, stood up there named Peter and said, You men of Judea and you that dwell, you men of Jerusalem and dwell in Judea, let this be known to you and hearken my words. These are not drunk, but let me tell you what the scripture says. It'll be, this is the light. Amen. 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 This is the word being manifested. Amen. 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 Same thing happens today, and they do like they did then, walk away and shake their heads. Yeah. Said, Let them alone. Blind leads a blind, they all fall in the ditch. Oh, it takes Christ's eternal life to bring the word of life to the vindication. Made flesh. Oh, my goodness. It takes the word, of, it takes the Holy Ghost to operate the word of God. Amen. When Jesus said, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, look, Mark 16, his last commission. All the world, all the world, 
It never has got there yet. Okay? All the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth in all the world and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And yeah. these signs shall follow them that believe. Yeah. They'll shake hands with the you know, They'll be good church members. In my name they shall cast out devils. Amen. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. They shall take up serpents and drink daily things that won't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Oh my. How far? Every creature. How much? All the world. Till he comes again. These signs shall... He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Even greater than this will he do. Amen. I'll go to my Father. Oh, how we can walk away from that is more than I can say. We are in more darkness now than they were. Yeah. I've got a couple more verses here. I want to get to the end as quick as possible. We're in more darkness than they was. I know I'll wear you out here for about an hour. Oh. But see, this tape's going on in there. See, hey. They're in more darkness than we are. I made the statement that. Why? The churches in this glare is so deceiving. It looks like it's the truth. Now, didn't Jesus say, uh, that's me, Matthew 24, Matthew 24, Jesus said that in the last days, the two spirits will be so close till it would deceive the very elected if it was possible. There will be an elected group come out to make the church in the last days. And these organizations, with what they call their truth, would be so close like the real thing that it would deceive the very elected, even Pentecostals. Now, you know... You ain't going to take a Pentecost and deceive him with some Methodist or Baptist doctrine. You ain't going to tell him that. He knows better. You ain't going to deceive some Baptist with a Lutheran doctrine either. See? And neither are you going to receive the message, deceive message on this word with some Pentecostal doctrine. A false father, son, Holy Ghost, and all this stuff like that and back there. And them creeds that they have that organization set up. No, indeed. You'll never deceive them. Because the elected won't be deceived. What is it? What is it? Deceiving these glares. What are they doing? They're leading the church to the council slaughter by their glare. That will be the final slaughter when her and Rome connects together. When they form that image of the beast, that's the final slaughter. And these glares that you got now, look what it's doing. Leading the people. It's a goat. A goat always leads the sheep to the slaughter. You've seen that in the slaughter pens. That goat will run right up there and lead the sheep, and then he'll jump out and let the sheep go on in. That's what he does. It always does. It was the goats that led Jesus, the lamb, to the slaughter, the Roman goats. That's right. It's, a, it's the denominational goats today that's leading the innocent sheep to the slaughter. Put their self, their names on them, book shiner, and they're finished. That is the mark of the beast. In the name of the Lord I speak. Amen. Help that for a long time. That's true. That's exactly. What is the beast? What is the beast? It's a Roman hierarchy. Amen. The first organization. What is the mark of it? The same thing. Exactly the same thing exactly as that was. The slaughter to the glare. But in the face of the present darkness, we still have seen the light of God shine through. Amen. How thankful we are for that. Listen close. We have seen the light. His word that He promised for this day proven and vindicated. Amen. It's the truth. The light of the hour. Oh my. I'm so glad. There's nothing wrong. No. There's nothing. Here I'll, I'll go a minister was saying he was down in Florida and he had him a, a car. I believe it was a Chevrolet and the thing uh, went out on him. He couldn't get it fixed. And he went into the garage and the little mechanic was going under it and over it and pecking around. He couldn't get it fixed. And he, he tried this and it wouldn't work. He tried something else and it wouldn't work. He put on a generator, put on this and put in plugs, put in points. He couldn't make the thing work. He just couldn't make it work. Finally, a nice dressed man stepped up. He said, uh, may I give you some advice? The little mechanic had sense enough to say, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, you take this and times this and this and he said put that together once and try and he took this times that and put it together and there she went the little mechanic turned around and said say who are you he was the engineer General Motors chief engineer he made the thing <laughs> he was the one designed in the day when we're talking about Methodist Baptist and Presbyterian chief mechanic here. The designer of his word. The man who created the heavens and earth. Designed the church. 
Does he know more about what it takes for the rapture or does the Methodist or Baptist church know more? Amen. Amen. He's the designer. He knows what it takes. He's well dressed in the power of his resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's walking among us today in the power of his resurrection. He knows what it takes to put a church in and rapture order. Amen. He designed it and put the parts together here in the Bible. Amen. Is that the current flow to it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That faith in his promised word of today flow through. You see how it operates. Why? He designed the thing. Amen. He designed his church by the word. That's what he puts together. Not by Methodist or Baptist or Presbyterian or Pentecostal organization, but by his word. Man shall live not by bread alone, but by every word. That proceeds from the mouth of God. Yes, sir. Get out of them glares. Amen. In the midst of darkness, this dark time that we're living in now is just got about five minutes more left. In the midst of darkness, who's going to bring the little bride out? Who knows about the chief design? (laughs) Oh, yeah. From all this confusion of glare, here the Methodists glaring one way, the Baptists another, and the Presbyterian another, and the Pentecostals another. All this glares around there. Run, put their name over here in this glare yet? Come and find out something there. Come over here. Something there. Come over here. I said that priest, if you all are the original church and you went at the doctrine of these men set together at Nicaea, why is it you haven't got the power that they had back there in the beginning? Why don't you do the things that they did, which Jesus said? I said, oh, we are more people now. We, we live in a different age. I said, but the word doesn't change. He said, Amen. these signs shall follow Amen. them through all the ages. Amen. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never. That's it. He said, well, you're talking about a Bible. I said, yes, the word, which is Christ. Right. And uh, so there you are. See, and in this glare, the Methodist showing theirs, the Baptist showing theirs, the Presbyterian theirs, each one growing bigger and bigger all the time. The poor little bride. <laughs> Where's she at? She wrote here at the Pentecostal oneness a while. She put her name on there and she said, well, come to find out, look what they do. And they come over here and you got to belong to us. If you don't belong to our church, you're not even in the bride. You're not even nothing. Go over here at the assemblies and look what they got. <laughs> There you are again. Go down to the Baptist. Look what they got. Yeah. Look at press. What's going to happen to the poor little thing? <laughs> but she's coming forth, don't you? Amen. Amen. She's going to be there. Yeah. A fellow was saying here about a couple of years ago. He's down in New Mexico. I held a meeting there close to Carl's Bad Caverns. You've heard of them down there. The yes. great. And they took a man and his wife and a bunch of children. Went on this elevator and went all the way down to the very bottom of the pit. And when they got down there, they turned all the lights off. And when they turned all the lights off, it was midnight dark. I had them do that over here in these gardens here. And at one time at, uh, over in uh, Colorado, their wife and I back there was in there. And they turned them lights on. My, you put your hand like this, you couldn't see nothing. And there was a little girl standing there. And she began screaming. Oh, screaming. She, she was scared to death. It was so dark. The poor little thing was grabbing everywhere, trying to scream and holler for her papa and mama. Everywhere she just couldn't stand it. It was so dark. She never seen such darkness. And that's about the way it is now. Yeah, amen. That's right. It's so dark you don't know where to go. Yeah. Yeah, you go to Methodist, go to Baptist, go to Presbyterian. It's all the same thing. Eating that old dead rotten man with wiggle well, nails in it. Amen. Same amen. thing. Some creed come in, join this and the other. That. Old creed and everything. You don't see Christ in it. Oh, you see self-righteous people. Many of fine people in there now. In them denominations. I'm saying the system. Not the people in there. But you see, that's what they're eating on. Tell them about it. Here's fresh food. Amen. This little girl standing there. She's screaming at the top of her voice about going to hysterics. About like the little bride is. But you know what? Her little brother cried out. Said, little sister, don't fear. Because he's standing right with the engineer. Said, there's a man here who can turn on the lights. Don't fear, little sister. There's a man here who can turn on the lights. To make this word live. We don't know how he's coming. We don't know how when he's coming. I don't know nothing about that, but he's here. And he can turn on the lights. How are we going to get out of it? I don't know. But he's here. And he's the one that can turn on the lights. 
Yes, yes sir. He is the one. He is the light. He just makes himself known. That's how he turns on the light. Exactly right. It takes Christ to flash away on his lights and then all the darkness scatters. He separates. He's pulling his little bride out. I'll take a people out of the Gentiles. Amen. For my name's sake. They'll have my name. What is his name? All right. Not Methodist, Baptist, no. Presbyterian, Luther. It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's right. He is the light. The truth, the light. There's no darkness in him. And he scatters the darkness when he comes in because he is the word. The word is the light. That's right. Because he yes. spoke to let there be light. That was the word to become light. When he speaks this, it's the light of that age each time. Now, he shared, uh, in, in, not in a glare, but people are living in a glare, but he is the vindicated word. He is absolutely the, the light in the time of darkness. Yes, sir. All these false glares and things will fade away. Yes, sir. He is sure. Don't fear. Turn on the lights. This promised word, it lives. Amen. It makes he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he do also. Then it is the word, as the Father sent me, so send I you. The Father that sent him, come in him. The Jesus that sent you, comes in him. And the works that he did then, he does the same thing. Because why? The word is made flesh in human flesh manifest itself as the light of the day. Amen. Amen. There we are. There it is. It's just showing the way to light and the light. Wise men who are not blinded by creeds and denominations will walk in that light. Oh my. There is a man here that can turn on the lights all right. What does he do? By vindicating his word for this day. Jesus, the Son of God who promised the word for this day is right here with us don't get scared. Don't pay attention to what they're doing. You do, you'll walk in darkness. Be wise. They that do wise, Daniel said, in these last days will do exploits for their God. Amen. They, they walk in the light as he's in the light. Don't worry. It may be dark. It looks like they're going to force us, everyone. All these, you see their proclamation going out. All these little churches and things are got to come in now. You've got to come in or they're going to close you up. They're going to make it. Now, we want to hit that real hard tonight when we get to this time. Uh, see, Now, this, we're going to close up. You have to be one of them or not. You're, you're either into that or you can't do nothing. Can't even buy or sell. So, you're daring to pray for the sick. If you're caught ministering to any sick or any person with any spiritual thing uh, in there, you're subject to a federal law to be executed. That's exactly right. You know that. It's right, right. It's in their papers. Yes, sir. So you cannot do it. You have to belong to the cult. Brother, let me tell you something. You better get Christ sure in your heart right now. Amen. Because there is a time coming where you're really going to need it. Amen. You're out then. You remember when that seal's put on, she's there for good. Amen. So don't you do it. Don't you believe that stuff. You get right into Christ right now, the Word. Yes, sir. Vindicates the word and shows that it is the light of the hour. That's how we know he is the light, because he is the light manifests itself in flesh. How do we know? He was God's word made flesh. Yeah. See? God's word was showing itself, vindicating itself. When the Messiah cometh, what he'll do? The woman said at the well, when the Messiah cometh, he'll do these things. You must be the prophet, which is the word, foretelling us these things. He said, I am he. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's enough. The light shined on the promised word. There's a light. Right into the city she went and said, Come see a man who told me the things I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Amen. That was it. See? No matter what the others said, she knew that was Messiah. Remember, in every age and time of darkness, God has always had His word to divide the light from the dark. He had to the days of Luther when the Catholic Church had everything. He sent Luther as a shining light. And Luther divided truth from darkness. And when the Lutherans got twisted up, he made of John Wesley. And he divided light from darkness. And in the days of Pentecost, when the Wesleyan got all, and the Methodists got all gummed up, and the Baptists and Presbyterian, he sent the Pentecostal message to separate light from darkness. The Pentecost went right back out into the darkness again like that in their organization, took their creeds and things. Now the hour has come for this word to be vindicated. Amen. He sends a light. The word made manifest like he did in the beginning. Sends a word and it proves itself. There is light. 
And he always separates. The same is now as eternal lights in the beginning. Look in children. As I say, I'm five minutes past time now. But let me say this one thing. There is a man present. Don't get scared. No matter what they say. I've seen it come to the spot where I didn't know where to move next. But he's always present. The never failing presence. He's always there. He can turn on the light. Amen. Yes, sir. He's just waiting. See what you're going to do. He can flip the switch anytime he wants to. Yes, sir. There's a man here that can turn on the lights. Those who sit in the regions of the shadow of death. Some of them under cancer. Some of them under uh, the death of denominations. Some of them under creed's death. Some of them under traditional death. And all them kinds of death. And they have seen a great light. The man that flashed the lights then is the same one who said in the beginning, Let there be light. That same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. He's present today. Right here now. Don't get scared. He can turn on the lights. When the persecution comes, don't get scared. There's a light said it catches people away. She'll not go through the tribulation. She'll never do it. She'll be caught away. How are they going to do it, Brother Ram? It looks awful dark. No matter how dark it gets. You can't see your hand before. Just remember there's a man here that can turn on the light. Can rapture that church. You say, well, I'm right. Yeah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is right up to the fiery furnace. But there's a man there. He can turn on the air. Yes, sir. That rushing mighty wind that come down the day of Pentecost, he turned it on again and fanned all the breeze away from him. All the fire. There was a man there. He's called the fourth man. There's one here today. He's the only one. He's got the light switch in his hand. Those who said in the regions of the shadow of death, great light sprung up. Don't reject it. Receive it in the name of the Lord. While we bow our heads. We walk in the light. Beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light. It's such a beautiful light. It comes where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Come ye saints of light proclaim. Jesus, the light of the world. Then the bell of heaven will ring. Jesus, the light. What is the vindicated word? Is Jesus today? He is the word. We walk in the light. It's such a beautiful world. It comes where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Oh, shine all around us by day. With your heads bowed, I wonder how many here would like to walk in this light under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the vindicated word of today. See, the word that God promised today sit manifested. Wasn't that what he was in the beginning? He was the word. The son was born. He was the word. He was the Messiah. He was the vindicated word. Amen. So then, the word God spoke to be, the end from the beginning. Now, there's a word for this day. Yeah. And He's here. Amen. Vindicating that word in the midst of confusion, darkness, and glares. It looks a whole lot like it, but it isn't it. It don't prove to be it. The cre- Jesus said, If I cast out devils by the finger of God, who do you cast them out by? Oh, yeah. They didn't cast them out. But no, if I cast out a devil by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come nigh. Oh, let's think of it. As we raise our hands slowly now, think real quiet. 
we'll walk in this light. This is such a beautiful light. And it comes where the dew drops. Make your confession. Believe God now. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Oh, we'll walk in this light. It's such a beautiful light. It comes where the dew drops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. But Jesus, the light of the world. While they continue playing, I want to ask, every age has been the same. In the days of Noah, those who rejected the light, what did they do? Walked out into God's judgment. What happened to Pharaoh in the days of the life of the burning bush that was in Moses? Walked into the sea of death. What happened to Dathan who started and then rejected the light? Walked into the crack of the earth and swallowed him up. What happened in all ages to those who failed to walk in the light? The light of the day. It's Jesus all the time. It was Jesus in the days of that man. It's Jesus today, for He is the Word, and the Word makes the light. It's the light of the day. Think of it now, real quietly, while we're with sincerity. Asked, are you walking in the light? While we hum it through again. Comes where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Oh Jesus, the light of the world. Let's stand up now to our feet. I pray the Heavenly Father to let this message soak deep into the hearts of the people who are present, those who will hear it by tape. And may the light come forth upon the Word, the seed, and bring forth ever predestinated seed that's been planted out here in these different glares, organizations. May they see like Nicodemus, even if they have to come by night, come to the light. Grant it, Father. May there come forth this great issue of this rock that's cut out of the mountain without hands. It'll crush these Gentile kingdoms to the ground. All these kingdoms, spiritual kingdoms and natural kingdoms, and the rock will cover the whole earth. It'll be a purified affair. Those who that rock crush will be ground into powder. Those who fall upon that rock shall have a solid foundation. Oh, Christ, let me as your servant die upon this rock, this rock of thy word. Lord God, let me stand as David and them warriors of old who stood for David. Let me stand for this word today while I see it's rejected by the denominations. It's laying up here in a little retreat somewhere. Oh, God, I grant that we'll have strength and courage and the Holy Spirit to stand for the hours are getting darker and darker. But let us always remember it's your presence to turn on the light. At any hour that you wish to, you can turn the light, Father. So we pray, as you said, ye are the light of the world. Grant, Lord, that our lights who are of your service will shine so bright to the others that they'll see the light of the gospel as we live it, Lord, day by day, reflecting to them the life of Jesus Christ as He was on earth. Full of humility and sweetness, yet with the Word being lived right through Him, grant it, Lord, for we're looking to You, the Great One with the switch in the hand. You hold the world in Your hand. You hold all things in Your hand and uphold the world by Your Word. Oh, Father, 
let us receive the word. Will you please, Lord? Let that be the testimony and the desire of every heart in here. Fathers, we sing these hymns. Uh, David sung the hymns. They become prophecy. They were prophecy. And you recognize that prophecy. As we sing it, Lord, let it be in our hearts too. As we sing, we'll walk in this life. Let it be, Lord. This is a beautiful life. It's the Word. It's Christ living among us. Not what He was, what He is. And we know what He was only reflected what He is. And we pray, Father, that the people will understand and walk in this beautiful light. We ask in Jesus' name. While we remain standing just a moment, I want us to all sing. Now, in here, there's Presbyterian, Methodist, Catholic. This is a mixed-up audience when it comes to denominational. Now, remember, let it be known that I'm speaking in nothing against the people in these glares, but I've proved it to the Bible that they are glares. Amen. If it wasn't, Christ would be doing like He promised to do with them. See? Amen. But they refuse that. See? And when you get there, what do you find? Adjourn the church. Recite a creed. And what does it come out? Come to the end of the road, you find out is a false mirage. Christ is the Word. He is the light. Live now while you can live. You live for something. What are you living for? So He can die. Every one of you. What are you working for? To eat. What are you eating for? To live. What are you living for? To die. So why not live to live? Why not live to live? Then the only way you can live is accept the Word because man shall not live by bread alone. What we make out here with the sweat of our brow. But by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now the word of the mouth of God is being vindicated right here before us by the Holy Spirit. Live by it, won't you? Now I want while we sing this again, let's just each one stand in our place, reach over and take hold of somebody's hands and say, Brother, let's walk in this light while we sing walk in the light, will you? Pray for each other as you put your hands together while we sing it together with closing our eyes as far as possible. We walk in the light. Such a beautiful light, it comes where the dewdrops of mercy are bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Who is it? Jesus, the light of the world. Now let's raise your hands. we walk in the light. It's a beautiful What is it? Jesus, the light of the world. Then the bells of heaven will ring. Oh, Jesus, the light of the world. Oh, let's sing it out now. We walk in the light. It's a Remember when Israel was in their journey eating new manna every day? Amen. They walked in the light of a pillar of fire. Yes. That pillar of fire was Jesus Christ. Yes. The Bible says it was. And today He is with us. We have it. We know He's with us. The same pillar of fire doing the same things that He did when He was here on earth to fulfill His word. Yes. As we go from here, let's remember, keep that song in our hearts if we go to our homes. As the wheels hum a song, before you eat your dinner, bow your head and thank God for sending forth light to bring food upon the earth or your physical body. Then thank God for sending spiritual light, His Word, that He might give food to the soul. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Keep singing this hymn to yourselves in your home among your people and meet us back here about 6.30 tonight Amen. for the prayer cards and so forth. We'll see you then. Until then, 
Bow your heads. I'm going to ask Brother Neville if he'll walk up here now, the pastor, and dismiss us in a word of prayer.